All right, we're live right now, just so you know, so no swearing. Um, I'm going to listen to the live stream, see if it actually happens to have sound. Since your recording things have been weird. But this is my laptop, so I haven't had that issue. Testing, testing, one, two. All right, now open us up then. Hi, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome in here, Johnson County Community College. For you over here, I'm Dylan Van Vee, right next to me. Reed sitting here. We had a little bit of a problem with our audio. We thought it was, it's having a little bit of problem. We 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 tested we tested to make sure that it's like testing and the audio is good on a recording beforehand. We had we just had a I couple of the, problems the here. This is that recently, the opponent? With, um, is that the, recently that just with our shows recordings? Line? But right. we do have the starting lineup here. Uh, Jake McClure is going to lead off for Johnson County, but on the mound here is going to be the most important thing for Johnson County as well, and that is going to be um, here. Let me take a picture. Just making sure, yeah, it is John Chambers on the mound. Just making sure that was correct. So it is going to be Chambers on the mound. The starting lineup here, McClure is going to be in center field, batting first Fleck at shortstop, Mosh at second base, Brewer at third, or Brewer at first base, excuse me, Hepburn at DH, Tisdale at center field. And uh, that will be the first seven or so here for Johnson County as we get away with the first pitch, and it will be an off speed in there for strike one. Johnson County won the first two of this four-game series here against Neosho. I went just off to play it outside. They won the first one, one to nothing. Won the second one a lot easier, eleven to one. Chambers making quick work here on the mound, throwing in there for strike two, and got him down here to one-two count. Ready to deliver again, right back to him, and it'll be a quick PFP. And for the first out over to Brewer and throw it around the horn here and out number one to Johnson County. And that will bring up third, base. third baseman Luke Westerman. Luke Westerman is going to come up to the plate here for the Osho batting a second. And there for strike one. Bushman batting 255 so far this season. I went just a little bit high on the off speed. Going in there, and that one will land. Looking like exactly what he wanted to do with his second pitch. Right back to it with a 1-2 count here for Chambers. This pitch, and that one will find the plate called strike three. And he'll throw it around the horn again. Not liking the call was Westerman, but calling it right on the outside corner. So two outs here for Johnson County. Great start so far on the mound for Chambers, making quick work. Getting the outs on a 1-2 count both times. That one will fall and into the dirt for first pitch ball. First time we've had that in the three batters. I went in there, strike one, and we'll back to even. That one was close to that outside edge, so maybe a bit of a zone expansion here on this third pitch of the A-B. Right back to it on a one-two count. Had it all three batters here so far is Chambers. So far this this season, Chambers, 18 and two-thirds pitched. It's a 386 ear away, 129 whip. Pretty solid numbers here. That one hit out foul. Hmm. Does have 11 and a half Ks per nine. Most of the pitchers following suit for that for Johnson County. That one goes behind them. Look out and... Looked like it almost grazed it, but it did not. Coaster will stay in there here, and we'll see another pitch in a full count. Chambers hoping to not lose his first batter on the day here. 
Okay, I'll pitch that one will end up high, so it will be a six pitch and walk. That will bring up the star player here, Brendan Fry, for this Neosho team. Batting 492 so far this season. His OPS over 1,600. That one fouled straight back. Didn't miss it by much. Chambers going to have to watch himself here with Fry. Does have nine home runs on this season. Triple the amount of anybody else on his team. That one in there for strike two. So have him in a hole here is Fry. Chambers looking to get out of it. Had the first two quickly. Both on four pitch ABs. Gave up a seven pitch walk. Now looking to make work with Fry. That one tried to frame it back there. Was one two again here. That one will be hit towards the left side and foul. Fry impressive numbers so far this season. Will more than likely go on play elsewhere. His slugging percentage over a thousand. 26 RBIs, only seven more than any other, anybody else on his team. I wonder why he bats the cleanup spot. That one ends up high on the off speed, lost it a little. Back to evens at 2 2. Sixth pitch of the at bat coming here. Still a little low, and a full count again here for Chambers made. Two four pitch batters. The first two will make quick work, and these two he's really pushed himself. Both seven pitches on this delivery. And now the runner is going to be in motion too with the two out full count. So if the ball happens to be put in play, could be dangerous for the Cavaliers. So we'll be Coaster here in motion. 3-2 again. Eighth pitch of the at-bat will land low, and it's back-to-back -back walks here for Chambers. That one was certainly close, but didn't catch the zone. So now after the, you mentioned, Dylan, the, the quick start, two quick outs, now two walks, both on the full count. So it's not like Chambers has completely lost control here, but now he finds himself in a little bit of danger, runner in scoring position. However, there is a force out. At third. I brought out Kilgore here to talk to Chambers, try to get him to calm down. Those two batters accounted for 15 pitches and no outs. So, yeah, Kilgore's thrown, first two. Kilgore's thrown 22, or excuse me, uh, Chambers has thrown 22 pitches now. I want a big swing and a miss that time by Moore. Well, so far this season, hitting 293. Rosado player batting five here in the lineup. What's his uh, RBI total? Going to have 11 RBIs so far on the season. Excuse me, 13 RBIs on the season. So he tries. He's looking to add to that here. If he can find a gap. Chambers the 1-1. One, one. That one fouled off to the right side again. You know, for how big the net is here at Johnson County, some of them get over that one, just hit the top of the net, but a lot of them get over the big net here at Johnson County. It's Thankfully, there's no, uh, there's no, there's no parking that's too close. Yeah, have to hit one uh, pretty far to the either side to get to a parking lot here. So or be a very un uh, unlucky timed driver coming by. Well, that ends up low again. So back to evens is the count. This guy is seen. Now five pitches, so Chambers now, as you mentioned, Reed, getting up there in the pitch count already in the first inning. And it seems like Chambers is getting close to the zone. He's finding spots, and this is going to be trouble for the Cavaliers. I want a real score coaster at third now. This Fry, so it'll be a two-out RBI single on two strikes, that is, with Cody Moore. So he'll add to that RBI total. 14 now on the season, and Chambers still got some work to do with runners at first and third, still with two outs in this game. 
That brings up number 25 in Tyler Leonard. So Chambers now at 27 pitches. Neosha with an early lead. Leonard just won at bat in the first two games here for Neosho. It was 0 for 1. Trying to add to his stat category. That was a nice frame job that time. Kilgore caught that outside. Now Chambers got him 0 and 2, looking to get out of the trouble with just one on the board. Here's the 0 2. And high cheese. That one hit towards the net again. You know, ever since I said that net thing, they've had three of them hit into it, and then they've stopped them all. So, you know. Announcer's Jinx even works with uh, foul balls going out of the field of play, apparently. And that one, they get on the Ugly swing. swing and a miss there. I'm not exactly sure if that was called on the swing or if that was just a strike. Either way, it was the third out of the inning. One run scored, however, for the Panthers. Johnson County will make it make to look at even or more here in the bottom of the first. Hey folks, save a thousand bucks on your interior painting project this winter. Hire Absolute Painting during November through February and qualify for 10% off your project, a free paint upgrade, and a free color consultation to make sure you choose the perfect colors to transform your home. This amazing offer only lasts until our winter calendar is booked and spots are filling up fast. Call now and save a thousand bucks on your interior project. No money down affordable monthly payment options are available. This offer won't last long, so call now to save a thousand bucks on your interior project with Absolute Painting, where quality is absolute. For more than 20 years, Gherkin Rental has been the place to go to get the job done in eastern Kansas and western Missouri. With a huge selection of quality equipment, from roll-offs to trailers, telehandlers to generators, power washers to popcorn makers, experienced equipment professionals, and clean, well-maintained tools to help you get the job done right the first time. Gherkin Rental. Stop by any of their 13 locations across the KC Metro or call 855-GHERKINS. That's 855-437-5367. Welcome back in here, Johnson County. Down one here early in this one, and it was an RBI single off the bat of Cody Moore. That scored Coaster after a couple of quick outs by Chambers. He gave up a couple of long walks and ended up in one run. So McClure. We'll have Jake McClure here batting first. Gives a little fist bump to the catcher and Cody Moore. So Maybe giving a fist bump about that first inning hit. Not exactly sure exactly what I would do if he scored against me in the first inning, but he'll take ball one here outside. That one just registered a little low. Women's in here on the mound on the side of Neosho. Trying to go and make quick work here up one. That one finds the inside corner. Strike one. I went too far inside, nearly hit McClure. Cavaliers trying to get off to a good start here as they find themselves down only by one. But that was enough to win a game yesterday. Where was it? Hit towards left side, stopped by the net again. But yeah, the one zero you were telling me. <laughs> so <laughs> clearly, these two teams can be uh, can be close, closely matched. We've had a couple of games. This year, where one of them seemed like a blowout, and the other one was a little bit closer game. We did one a little bit back. Then. That Ooh, one, watch out. McClure hitting the helmet, and 
He's going to take a second, a mean back flip back to the dugout, but he's going to take his base. And one doesn't make feel good. Sure everything's all right. Not anything intentional. Right, he's taking the short step number four, United Slack. Looks like McClure is doing okay. I guess that's what the helmet's for, but... And I've seen... I remember I was at a Coors Field one time when Chris Bryant got hit in the head. I was I was there. I'm a Cubs fan. I was there to see Chris Bryant. Chris Bryant was my favorite player at the time. Mm -hmm. And I go to... And what, three or four pitches in, he gets hit in the head out for the entire game, out for like a week with... with uh, well, they, they didn't say he had a concussion, but I mean... It, it looked like it for sure on the field, the way the way he was acting. He didn't, he didn't seem like he really knew where he was, but... Seems that McClure's at least all, uh, all right enough to continue running, which is not the same um, standard you tend to find as uh, as going out in the field. A lot of times they'll let guys run and then come back to the dugout and truly assess the state of how they're feeling. Well, on a bunt by Fleck attempt, and that one will end there for strike one, or strike two, excuse me. So an 0-2 count, and unless you're going to risk something big, you're not going to try to bunt again, but... Look, looking like he's going to take his two-strike approach here. Maybe just trying to advance that runner into scoring position here early in the inning. That one towards the right side. That will be extra bases here for Fleck. That will bring around a third. He is... The fielder's saying that he him. can't no, get it. No, is... What's going to be the call here on the field? The fielder threw up his arm saying it was under the bullpen wall. The umpires still aren't sure what to call about it. The ball did come out, and it was easier to get to than what the fielder originally thought. So what's going to be the call here? Both runners just touched home. That doesn't mean that that's actually going to be what happens here. So they are so, going to do a ground rule double is what they're going to call it. So no run score. Come out and yeah, he's... So he threw up his hands over there in... Which doesn't automatically mean that they are right. It's just an appeal to the ump to say, hey, I don't think I can get this ball where it's sitting. And of course, with no uh, no replay or uh, or umpires down the, the line, it's always tough to actually tell for these umpires positioned in the infield. So Warner will go back to the dugout, but it will be a second and third. So no RBI here for Fleck, but a great... Two strike hit. He is 388 in the average this season. So try to get an RBI there. It has 11 of them on the season as Fleck, but won't get one. And now it is off here to the third batter in Mosh, trying to drive in two RBIs. It's a good start to the inning, though. I mean, you know, two batters in for Naosho. They were two outs, but they did end up getting a run around here. The Cavs, two batters in. They're both standing in scoring position, so I think you'll definitely take that here as they try to tie this game up or maybe more. That will be low. Nice and high there. So far, 377 on the year. And their games yesterday, McClure, or I mean games yesterday, excuse me, Mosh was had four hits in a total of nine at-bats. One and looked like he made up his mind quick enough, but it will fall in there there for strike one, two and one count. Yeah, that one definitely caught him off guard. He realized pretty late on that that was going to catch the zone and actually didn't even get a swing away in the end. It just was in the zone. He wanted to make sure he didn't make soft contact. That one too low. Radar gun said 84, so it's getting in there quick from Clemenson. Could the Cavs load the bases with nobody out? Or could Mosh capitalize on this opportunity and maybe swing at something in the zone? Oh, back pick try. Did he get on me? Got him. Sorry for the camera work there. Missed that one. McClurg was inching down the line and really good play by Moore. Picked him back and he is the first out of the inning. Yeah, Cody Moore having a nice game so far, an RBI single on the offensive side, and now a back pick to third base. And that'll put Johnson County in a much worse spot than they were looking at. 3-2 count. They've got two outs, is that right? Am I missing one? Two outs. Well, 
No, that's two outs. Yeah, I was about to say. I was like, there, there's not two outs. I was like, I'm looking. I'm looking down my list. I'm, I'm only, like, wait a minute. There's only three batters. Yeah, no, that's that is that is now two outs here for Johnson County. So it went here from a second and third no out situation to a runner on second with two outs. And now Brewer up to bat. That one swing and a hit towards right field. That one still carrying back and is gone. Oppo Taco home run here for Brewer. A big swing and a two run home run to put Jackson County back up here early in the first inning. Boy, did they need that one. Two out runs. Both teams now have gotten all of their runs with two outs in the inning. The Cavaliers find themselves on top by way of theirs. Designated hitter number 20. It's Brewer's eighth home run of the season. In the statistical category, he is now double anybody else on his team in that category now with eight so far. The next closest in Hepburn with four. And he will bat now. 429 on the season is Hepburn. Highest average on the team outside Tyler Buckman, who's only got eight at-bats. And You know what? You uh, I kind of maybe hate to bring it up a bit, but how big is that pickoff of uh, of McClure on third? That That's an extra run that would have scored there um, that is now gone, or, or not now gone, but could have been scored on that home run just the same. So a big play by Moore, even though his team now trails. Brewer some serious power this year. 29 RBIs on the season. Next closest in Mosh with 18. That one hit towards the other side of the Hepburn. Nice on a short hop and strong throw. That'll retire the side play made by Westerman over there at third base. But Johnson County gets two back here in the bottom of the first. Two to one when we get back. Call insurance agent. Hello, customer. Oh, great. Uh, I just had a quick question about my insurance. You are 312th in line. Oh, it's just a real quick question. Would you like a callback in six hours? Sometimes humans are just more helpful. Hey, Max, I can answer your insurance question. Awesome. I appreciate it. Farm Bureau Financial Services. It's your future. Let's protect it. Contact Farm Bureau agent Anthony Brown in Eudora today at 785-615-0516. At Kansas Insurance, we know one size doesn't fit all. In fact, our whole mindset is based on customized policies for you and your families. We're local, and we do what we do because we care about you. Think of us as brokers for your insurance needs. Working with Kansas Insurance gets you the award-winning service and attention to detail that only an independent agency can provide. All across Kansas, we're here to help you manage and plan for all types of risk. Contact a local agent today. Kansas Insurance. Local. Independent. Serving you. Welcome back in here, Johnson County, just in time for that first pitch there. It was Dagan Brewer hitting a big two-run home run to the opposite field that put Johnson County back up one at the end of the first. It was Cody Moore, however, who was making plays on both sides for Naosho, getting a back pick on the defensive side right before that Brewer home run. And then he also got the RBI single to right field that scored the beginning run for Naosho. Catchers could definitely play a big part in the game today. Of course, on the JCCC side of things, you've got Kilgore behind the plate and Hepburn DHing. Some catchers, they love to make big impacts in these games. I want a little bit high and out or inside, excuse me, to one big swing and miss to foul right side. So full count again. Chambers has been living in the full count recently. I want to hit to right field, popped up by Dale under it now, and we'll make the play. It's Edwards out there. 
Number 16 in Edwards will make that play in right field. Center number seven, David Brain. Oh, and just a little low for Chambers. You mentioned it, Reed. He, he was making quick work originally, but he has been living in the full counts. Had a couple of walks in that last inning that ended up costing him. You want to get up here early in counts in a 1-1. One, one. The biggest pitch here, in my opinion, is get to 1-2 instead of 2-1. Two, the 230 on the average of batting points. That's a dive. Nice play by Brewer. Going to get the play. He does. Nice play over at third base. Oh, beautiful on the dive down the line. That's Black making that play. Jordan Black, the infielder at third base, showing off his glove skills, and that will save a possible extra base hit. It looked like running down the line. He wasn't running very straight, thinking probably he was looking for extra bases was Brady, but... Ended up making the play, and costing them on that side was Black, and that will now be ball two, two and zero oh count to the next batter. Chambers is now at forty pitches here, but what a uh, what a big pick me up play by Black. That one is going to be hit a ton and going to get over the wall in left center, right over that three seventy sign, and this game is back to evens at two apiece. And do you know what keeps up? All of the runs in our game have been scored with two outs. Really interesting how, how that's going, where the pitchers are just on the brink of getting out of the inning and end up getting hurt twice by the long ball now. And we're tied up. We've got a good game here so far. Yeah, Beck right there, his second home run of the season. Only 12th RBI as well. But it ties the game up here at two, and that one will be fouled. Hit about twice with his back, came back and hit him when it bounced up. So back to the top of the order here for Naosho. Rodriguez, first time around, just hit a little dribbler back to Chambers. And now it looks like Chambers might be a little bit afraid of the zone. Those two in a row there weren't even particularly close. The two and one. That one will end up high as well. So back to 31. You know, it's always, you always, you know, you knock you off your zone, obviously giving up a home run. I mean, you would obviously think so, but you've got to find yourself in Chambers losing the next batter, not the way to do it. And I wouldn't be surprised if Kilgore just goes and talks to his pitcher here and he just stay behind the plate. Yeah, and, and you know, as, um, as Chambers closes in there on 50 comes. pitches, you have to wonder what his outing is going to look like today now, especially with doubleheader action here on Johnson County Sports Live. You know, the, the Cavs would like to not have to use their bullpen, but I think that they can, they're always able to rely on good starts, which means that if they end up ever having to go to the bullpen, there's no worries there. Um, but Chambers, only in the second inning here, he will he would definitely like to lock in and try to get a full five innings uh, as is, you know, a, a quality start, as they say. Uh, but right now, a little bit tough with a, another walk here after giving up the home run. But two outs in the inning. I mean, he's so close. He's even just, you know, a, a, a weak grounder away from heading to the dugout. But it's just a, it seems, it seems right now that it's a little bit finicky. They got to try to lock in here early on in this game. Yeah, an 18 innings pitch, just five walks for Chambers so far this season. Another ball there. And really, he's got three today, so up to eight, but a little bit of trouble here finding the zone as Chambers finds it there, and he's in that one and one Big pitch coming up next. He fired that one in there. I had a little bit of anger behind it. It came in at 86. One, ooh, all the way up at 88 miles an hour, just outside. That one didn't catch enough fear of that outside corner. Back to two and one. And find it there. He does right back, putting close in the same location. Back to 22s here and a big pitch coming up next. Got to get this if you're Chambers with the confidence level. I'm thinking he's looking for the strikeout. 
And he gets it. He gets the hook and the strikeout. The second time that Westerman has been left out looking. And Chambers, the one walk and the home run given up. But it's a 2-2 game for Johnson County going in the bottom of the second. <laughs> Question, what will you find on all over-the-counter or OTC medicine packages to help you choose the right drug and use it safely? The answer, the drug facts label. This label lists the medicine's active ingredients and purpose, how much to take, and warnings you should know before using it. Remember, even OTC medicines you buy without a prescription can cause side effects you don't want. So follow the information listed on the drug facts label. For more information, visit FDA.gov slash drug facts label. A message from the U.S. Food and Drug Administration. Everybody can make something because I think everyone has a spark of creativity and the reason that I have to keep making is because I don't think my life would be as fulfilling without it. If you make things yourself, that means you're not cowering in fear. You're out there taking chances. That, I think, is my way of saying I love you to the world. All right, now I want to hear why you make. Share your own Why I Make story today. Visit whyimake.org. Center field number 14, oh, it's good. Jesse Tisdale. Welcome back in to Johnson County. Bill being on the mic here with you. It's so far been a good game. Two to two. Couple of home runs already. One for each side. Brewer on the side of Johnson County. On their side it was Beck. That one just missed by this batter here. Tisdale. Apologies about the camera, folks, trying to do what I can for the feed. Tisdale, so far this season, 333 average and 51 ABs. That one hit towards center field, but right to him and under it there. Brady in center field didn't even have to move his feet. The third base number 21, Jordan Black. It's going to bring up Jordan Black. Had a uh, gold glove style play over at third base. Really honestly saved a run because the next batter hit one out. So it would have been a two run shot if didn't make that play possibly. Black hit that one right in the gap between second and short, or between third and short, excuse me. and will find himself a nice little base hit. The catcher number 31, Cal Kilgore. That will bring up the other catcher here for Johnson County. And Kilgore behind the plate today. Him as well as Hepburn, two great catchers here for the Cavaliers. A great problem to have, having two really good catchers. It's probably the best thing she could have. Kilgore announced that he is committed to become a Utah Ute for this next baseball season will be his fourth different team at the collegiate level, having played for New Mexico, Arkansas, Johnson County, and then he'll be part of Utah. He also played collegiate summer ball for the Cape Catfish in Cape Girardeau, Missouri. So actually, it'll be his fifth team throughout his college career. Definitely trying to make it work, climb up the ranks, and Play baseball at the next level. They're right now in a hole of 0-2. And that one is not going to find the outside corner. It'll let them survive for one more pitch. 1-2 count. Clemenson. They deliver. One looked like a funky pitch going to the inside. Good job to spit on that one by Kilgore. 
Clemens is a couple. Clemenson's a couple pitches away from 30. Just to put into perspective, that Chambers is up around 50. However, we're tied here as things stand. That one fouled straight back by Kilgore. A 2 2 count. I don't know how Clemenson's honestly pitching with those sleeves on right now. I mean, it's a really nice day out, about 65 degrees. It's out on the mound as well. I mean, not my thing. Oof, that one wasn't even a little bit close. If Kilgore swung at that one, there would be real problems. He might have to go see an eye doctor. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he might not be going to Utah next year. 3-2 <laughs> <laughs> count. Still one out, man, and going, running, and that one hit towards left field. It's going to bounce off the wall. Running towards third is Black. He will stay there, and it's an extra base hit here for Kilgore. Second and third, and now with one out for Johnson County. Big hit there by Kilgore to get two runners in scoring position. Could the Cavaliers get the first runs of the game without two outs on the board and get themselves back in front? Through Riker Edwards. Edwards so far this year, just 25 ABs, 320 average. Does have 15 stolen bases, by far the most on his team. Next closest is nine. So he could possibly have some speed here if he gets on base as well. Try to get. His job done here, hit to the right side, get at least one of these runners in. Infield is playing back, so trying to play for the out more than just play for one run so far in this game. Yeah, I'll be interested to see what this AB looks like, how much they want to attack right here. They don't have to with the open base, but then that would uh, get you to Jake McClure and move the lineup back over, which is not exactly ideal. So they, they might need to prioritize getting him out here. Or at least doing their darndest. I went straight back by Riker. Barely missed again, but it will fall the one and two count. McClure, last time he was up now in the on deck circle, he was hitting the head. That's a good point. I hadn't thought about that. It's good that he's still sticking around. It'll be something to keep an eye on what his approach looks like if he still uh, has his typical stance. Or if he maybe takes a little bit of a step back from the plate. Ugly swing from Riker there. Edwards is trying to maybe just get a foul tip and spit to the next pitch, but couldn't get anything. It is a ugly K. And we'll be now two outs here for Johnson County. And now having about 1,000 is McClure. And uh, not to beat the dead horse, but if the Cavs are going to score here, it's going to be with two outs. Seems All four to. runs so far today, scored with two outs. That one ends just a little bit low here to McClure. Saw a few pitches. It was a 2-2 two -two count when he got hit in the head. Lefty on lefty here. He squares the bunt with two outs and will foul it back. Interesting. Possibly looking for... What you call a squeeze bunt? Well, but with two outs, it would have to be, he'd have to be safe as well. You know, it's not a suicide squeeze. It's specifically, you're right, just a squeeze. Yeah, those are, uh, those are tough plays to make. You have a little bit of an advantage coming out of the left handed batter's box. That uh, one well, takes a candy hop on the run, retiring the side is the Shortstop in Beck, and no run scored, but a couple of hits left on bases, too, in Jordan Black, as well as Kilgore, but a 2-2 game going into the third.
Hey folks, save a thousand bucks on your interior painting project this winter. Hire Absolute Painting during November through February and qualify for 10% off your project, a free paint upgrade, and a free color consultation to make sure you choose the perfect colors to transform your home. This amazing offer only lasts until our winter calendar is booked and spots are filling up fast. Call now and save a thousand bucks on your interior project. No money down affordable monthly payment options are available. This offer won't last long, so call now to save a thousand bucks on your interior project with Absolute Painting, where quality is absolute. For more than 20 years, Gherkin Rental has been the place to go to get the job done in eastern Kansas and western Missouri. With a huge selection of quality equipment, from roll-offs to trailers, telehandlers to generators, power washers to popcorn makers. Experienced equipment professionals and clean, well-maintained tools to help you get the job done right. The first time, Gherkin Rental. Stop by any of their 13 locations across the KC Metro or call 855-GHERKINS. That's 855-437-5367. Back here on Johnson County's film. Chambers sets to deliver already in their strike one. They're just now joining us here at 2-2 game. It's been exciting so far. A couple of home runs, one on the side of the Cavaliers with Brewer in the first. Matching that in the second, top of the second inning was back as well for Naosho. So a 2-2 game here is that one hit in the center field right between in that little no man's land area. It's going to be called and got under there that time mosh making that play and one away here for johnson county good play by mosh there in the sun those are uh something that sometimes fans take to, to tend to take for granted but when it goes high up in the sun and it's in an area where it'll be a little bit crowded for the fielders a lot of things can go wrong. Mosh did well to take charge there and make sure he brought it in for the first out. It's a huge swing and miss that time. And go to an 0-1 count. Got to say, Chamber, Chambers is looking a little good. It was right as I started that thought. He lost a little bit of control on that one, but he's, uh, he seems to be rocking with some good control out there. See, Nears on 60 pitches already. Only in the third here. Only two and a third innings worth of work so far for Chambers. Another big swing and a miss by Fry. We mentioned Fry, a very dangerous hitter. Mentioned earlier, nine home runs on this season. Triple the amount of anybody else on his team. So big hacks here, and Chambers going right at him. That one ends up a little bit high and inside. I believe they call those daddy hacks. They do call those daddy hacks. <laughs> That one uh, popped up, just missed by Fry. Under it again is going to be Mosh. Can he make a play again? He will. Just in a little different spot, but same exact thing for Mosh. Two away here for the Cavs. Oh, yeah, that's the same thing of the type of play that can easily be messed up on such a sunny day as this. Um, you know, it's so easy to lose the ball when it goes high up in the sky. So big credit to Mosh to bring in both of the outs here so far. One and out here to Cody Moore. Last time up had that RBI single that put the first run on the board of the game. Also had a back pick in the, the bottom of the first that really honestly saved Naosho a run after Brewer hit a two-run home run instead of a three-run home run. That one curves right in there for strike two. There seems to be a bit of a, a bit of a lump out on the outside edge. See if Chambers can continue to attack that. And I think he did just that. Oh, they're saying no, he did not to the field umpire, but it was a good spot, though, because I think that that's it seems that that's going to be called as a strike most of the time. So trying to get more to chase as he does there. Gorgor couldn't make the squeeze a foul tip. It'll go. So more will stay alive and see the six pitch of this at bat. It is that one will end up low. Full count again will be six, the 68th pitch for Chambers. There it is. That one, a round ball over to short, Dan. Easy play there. Ooh. 
Nice stretch by Beck, and they will make the play a one, two, and three for Johnson County. A two to two game going in the bottom of the third. I used to drive an ambulance as an EMT, and I've always tried to be a safe driver. If people knew what I know, lives could be saved. In my car, if I see a truck or bus taking a turn, I know to take my time. When big vehicles turn right, they may swing wide to make the turn. If you try to sneak in, well, it's a lesson you'd rather not learn the hard way. When trucks and buses turn, let's you and I wait. It's our roads, it's our safety. Yeah. You need to go. Really? It's important. I feel fine. Look, you cannot mess around with this kind of stuff. Some cancers, that... man, we just don't want to lose you from something we could have caught. What I need to do? You just give your doctor a call. And they'll tell you what screening test you need. Fine. Can I have my pie now? Oh, man. <laughs> Welcome back in here, Johnson County. Could be a big inning coming up here for the Cavaliers. Do up Fleck, Mosh, and Brewer. They're two, three, four, so right in the heart of this order. Clemson's going to have to work his way through here at a tie score. The three of them combined, the three that are due up, have two for three so far today with two extra base hits. Definitely a good part of the lineup for the Cavs here. Look, last time he was up, doubled. And that one will be in there for strike one. He was the one that sent McClure to third base, ended up getting back picked by Cody Moore, but he scored on the home one by Brewer. And that was that outside edge I was talking about. I'll let you take this, Dylan. That one a falls in the center field, so another base hit here. For Fleck, and that'll be a nice start to the inning here for the Cavs. Hoping to build onto it now is Moss. Yeah, I was just as I was saying there that that outside corner. I mean, it, it looks like it's just outside, maybe a little bit. But you know, the rule actually is that if any of the ball nicks the zone, it's in for a strike. And I guess that's what the ump is seeing there. But that's going to be something these pitchers would like to attack going forward. And credit to the ump, he's calling it consistently. It's not like it's something that's been a problem. Nice heads up base running that time. Flick all the way, read the down angle, saw Cody Moore struggling with it, and took off even without the bun attempt. So not even a sacrifice now, and they've got the runner on second, and it could be a big opportunity here for Mosh to at least do their job and get him over. Struck out the last time he was up. Looking for a little bit better situation. That one ends up a little low. Fake the bunt again, second time. Mosh went down with the K last time, looking to do better for himself here as he's now got the speedy flex standing on second. He could look to give his team the lead. Just 10 Ks and 6-9 AB so far this season. So Mosh has done his job and put the ball in play. 377 average on base percentage over 500. 3 0 here. You give him the green light. Ooh, no outs. 3 0 count. Can't find the zone right here. And I guess we'll guess we'll never know. That I mean, was that was a that was a cheap answer there. You you didn't answer before it happened. Hey, tried Clemson, to tried to put you under some pressure hey, there. Hey, Clemson was working too fast. That's not what I was <laughs> Three one. Oh, and hit in the right Rip. field. Could it score? And going to keep him at third base is Coach Horner, and that will be first and third. But a base knock for Mosh. So he's one for two on the day. And that's going to bring up big-time power hitter Dagan Brewer. Perfect situation here if you're Johnson County, exactly what you wanted. 
first and third for your best hitter, 451 on the season. Five thirty on base percentage. Both the best on the team. I went hit towards third hard ground ball, but foul. Nearly caught Fleck over there. Standing at third. Where we're taking his signs comes in ready. Strong lead for Mosh over at first base. You will check him over there. It's the first time we've seen Clemson throw over to first so far as a lefty. Considering he was a lefty, that was not a very convincing move. Mosh saw it all the way. I have a feeling, uh, I have a feeling he might have a better move than that coming. Brewer takes that high cheese. Maybe lulling him into a false sense of security. Showing him a bad move that he then picks him off later. It's a long con. Yeah, when you need it, when you need it with bases, when you need it with like the first and third, when right, no outs like in this situation. And Mosh is taking a, a comfortable lead over there. Of course, he he's interested in trying to avoid any potential double play. And watching his lips was Fleck over at third base had a take a dodge ball listen there, a dodge duck dip dive and dodge. <laughs> Brewers hit two scorching ones over there, both foul, one, two count. Yeah, he loves pulling the ball. Now one outside, a two, two counts. We heard it from the Nao show fans. They wanted the K. That one seemed pretty well outside, which attacking that outside edge, one, I've commented already that, that some of the times those will be called a strike, but two, that's a good way to try to keep Brewer from pulling the ball. But he, he definitely likes hitting it to the left side of the field. That one ends up low, so we'll go to a full count here. It's a big moment in this game. The difference between a walk and an out here could be colossal. I can definitely see Mosh taking off here. He does. Here's the hit. Brewer in the left field. Will it get over? No, it hits the wall. It'll score at least one. It'll get Mosh to third. He's in there. He's safe at second. A dive in double. And Brewer nearly hit one. A second one over serious power to the left side. But an RBI double for Brewer. And it is Johnson County back in the lead 3 2. That was a close play at second there. But Brewer did well to extend that into an extra base hit. Make sure he avoids being in a potentially doubled off position and instead is in scoring position alongside Jack Mosh. So after that double, now second and third. Mosh at third, Brewer at second. Big swing and a miss by Hepburn. He grounded out to third last time he was up looking for something more here. 429 and a 492 on base percentage in his 56 ABs. Takes the high cheese, spits on it. We'll look to go on the one-one. It's crazy looking at the uh, at the scoreboard out in left center, seeing two hits and two runs for Naosho and three hits on three runs. Excuse me, three runs on seven hits for the Cavs. They're doing it in a, a little bit of a smaller ball fashion, though. There's a two-run shot in there, so not really. Burn big, boying and a miss, and that will sit him down. But he went down hacking, so a K here and 0 for 2 start for Hepburn. But Tisdale will try to pick up the two on base here. Two big ones. Clemenson was having a really nice day, but a little bit of crack starting to show here. Up to 55 pitches, still only giving up three runs, but could that get worse here with Tisdale's A.B.? Yeah, he's given up seven hits in his three and a third innings worth of work. Tisdale trying to make this eight. 
one by Clemenson. I want to hit foul back. One, one last time, hit right into center field. Didn't even have to move out there in center was Brady. And now a bunt attempt, and that's going to be in there for strike two. So one and two count. Interesting seeing how much the Cavs want to bunt here. Maybe they don't uh, They don't have much belief in the quality of Neosho's infielders. But they have not actually been able to drop down a good one to test them so far. Not playing up at all at is either any of the infield whatsoever. Still a three to two game, one two count here for Tisdale. Tisdale trying to get something big last time right to center field. It'd be interesting to see Mosh take a bigger lead at third. I mean, he doesn't need to risk getting picked off, but against a lefty, you you'd think he would have a lot of time to react, but he's not really getting too far down the line. You might remember also Cody Moore backpicked True. Clure in that True. first inning. So Great point. Clure, I'm sure they are definitely timid over there at that third base spot. Yeah, definitely better to make sure you're safe over there than get out while trying to get a few extra feet on like a foul ball or something. An ugly swing that time by Tizzo will sit him down on the off speed. So back to back K's and put him get out Jordan. of the inning. It's going to bring Jordan Black to the plate. Fourth K for Clemenson. Jordan Black looking to pick these two guys up. They had second and third with no outs off the hit by a Brewer. Back-to-back -back Ks. First pitch to Black is outside. That was Clemson's 62nd pitch, so he's definitely getting up there too. But I think that both guys, if they can can reel it in, I think they're both on pace to get a solid five innings, as as, as you'd hope to get out of your starting pitcher. Huge swing there. Chasing a little bit. That time was black on the off speed. We'll even the count up at once. Two huge runners on base right now in a three to two game. One outside. Interesting to see how much longer Clemenson and Chambers on the side of Johnson County will go. Looks like they got a little bit of movement in the bullpen on the Johnson County side. No one for Nao show, so they they trust their guy, which makes sense. He 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 really hasn't been wavering, even though right now this inning's requiring a bit of work from him. Um, that you know that happens to the best of them out there, and he's really getting the job done. If he gets out of this with only one run allowed, I think he'd still be happy. For the Naosho side of things, that is. The 2 2. One is going to find the plate. It will not. So we'll go to even here. Nice eye by Jordan Black. Full, actually. So this is potentially it for the inning. Biggest pitch of the day so far here for Clemson. Jordan Black will take time before it's delivered. Take a deep breath. Focus in here on this big one. Could he add to the long list of two out runs here? The full count. Or will it just be a one run lead for the Cavs heading into the fourth? Now Coach Yeager from third base is going to come over and have a talk with Black. What do you think that could have been, Dylan? I think it's more of a thing where you got to calm down. You look at them taking your breath, telling you, don't try to do too much. It's a two out approach here. Try to just knock it through one of these holes. I don't want to foul away again. Nice job to stay alive, and it will see an eighth pitch of the AB.
Black going to be looking for his pitch. Filing anything else off that he doesn't like. Very professional approach here for this AV. The payoff pitch from Clemenson. That one will not find the plate outside and low, so it is a walk, an eight-pitch walk for Jordan Black. Nice job getting not only to first base, but also to the pitch count of Clemenson. And that will get some movement going on in the bullpen. Brene Osho, and I believe it is number 45 on their side. Or Pacha. So bases loaded to the catcher, Kilgore. It is Pacha in the bullpen. Number 45 for in the Panthers. On oh, swing and miss again by Kilgore. You know, he doubled last time up. Boy, would a, uh, would a double excite the crowd here today on this lovely Sunday afternoon. One almost caught his ankles. Stayed right there. Didn't fray away from it at all, but a 2-1 count. Yeah, on top of uh, on top of Clemenson's seven hits allowed, he's just he just walked his first batter. He also, of course, hit McClure earlier in this game. Could have nearly had another hit by pitch there, which would have cost him a run. I want an off speed. Kilgore not expecting it that time, and got a pretty swing, but will look to go back with another swing here. Two two count, two strike approach. Chokes up on his bat just a little bit. There's the pitch. That one is in there. It's called strike third and too close. Not to swing for Kilgore. That time backwards K will end the inning three. The two Johnson County, they got one, but could have gotten a lot more. Left three stranded. We'll come back. Johnson County Sports Live. The Supplemental Security Income Program provides monthly payments to help meet basic needs, like putting food on the table, paying the rent, or buying new shoes for growing feet. You may qualify if your income and financial resources are low and you are 65 or older, or an adult or child with a disability or who is blind. Call 1-800-772-1213 or go to ssa.gov SSI to start to apply. Produced at U.S. taxpayer expense. At Kansas Insurance, we know one size doesn't fit all. In fact, our whole mindset is based on customized policies for you and your families. We're local, and we do what we do because we care about you. Think of us as brokers for your insurance needs. Working with Kansas Insurance gets you the award-winning service and attention to detail that only an independent agency can provide. All across Kansas, we're here to help you manage and plan for all types of risk. Contact a local agent today. Kansas Insurance. Local. Independent. Serving you. State coordinates of new land acquisition. Oh, you know that big oak tree that got struck by lightning? Negative. The barn with the funny cow mural? Negative. One-eyed scarecrow? Negative. Giant water tower? You're not from here, are you? I've never seen him. Robots don't know you. We do. Hey, how's your dad doing? For over 80 years, we've built relationships first and plans second. It's your future. Let's protect it. Contact Farm Bureau agent Anthony Brown in Eudora today at 785-615-0516. Welcome back here to Johnson County Sports Live. Dylan Dean on the mic here with you. It's a three to two game here for Johnson County. Starting a little bit too quickly that time was Chambers. Now set to deliver the first pitch of the inning. And it will be in there for a strike. Three innings worth of work so far for Chambers. Giving up just two hits and two runs, but has walked three. Last time he faced Leonard, he struck him out. That would be good for the confidence here for Chambers. Though I think he did have a really good uh, top of the third. I don't think that he's struggling 
But, uh, you know, strikeouts are always a good pick-me-up. One, two, big swing and a miss that time for Leonard. Chambers right back to work. We'll hammer it right back big. to him. Big time strikeout back to back. K's on the side if you're Leonard. So look to get bigger approach next time. But love that for Chambers as he tries to stretch this outing to a full five innings. And it fouled back for the one and one. Don Dale, last time he was up, blew out the Edwards and right. One in there, ball two, just a little low. Man, you could just, I, I don't know, I, I guess I haven't taken a mental picture of it before, but Chambers pitching motion right now, it looks like he's firing it in there with some extra venom. Could just be the way that he does it, because he's got some good velocity there. But uh, definitely, that, that arm's coming around quick. Big swing and a miss way behind that time. Yeah, he pulled something off there. Even though it was 85, that really it was effectively a, a change-up pitch, the way that that one was located. Now back-to-back K's for Chambers, who makes very quick work on the mound. He... I mean, yeah, he's good. You, right, right when you step back in there, I mean, he's 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 like ready and he's like starting his motion right when you're looking back up to him. I mean, he's pulling the old uh, quick and just hammers every single batter. Just make make sure that you're not in that box for more than a minute and a half, seeing five or six pitches. I think that was, I forget it was Nolan Ryan or Roger Clemens, but one of them they called the the human pitch count because if you uh, or the human pitch clock, excuse me, because if you were uh, not if he felt like you weren't being quick enough with your time, he would fire one at your head and say, be quicker next time, please. No, it was Nolan Ryan. He, uh, he did not like people wasting his time. He wanted to get home. Remember, uh, I believe it was Max Scherzer was one that that someone who was coming on late to throw the first pitch of the game and he had already gone out and was warming up and didn't let somebody throw the first pit or the first ceremony pitch of the game. Cause he was, he was like, no, you're too slow. I got out here first. I guess Scherzer's taking the ceremonial one now. <laughs> Full count, two outs. Can Chambers strike out the side? As ends up just a little bit low. Is that going to be apparently three? I believe apparently or is that four. Okay, yeah, it doesn't okay. be a walk. I was about to say, I thought that was four, but it will be a walk. So the fourth issued by Chambers today. He does only have five before today, so nearly doubling his walk rates today. But I mean, only giving up two hits and two runs. His team's in the lead. So even though it's not a, it's not a the perfect day for Chambers. It's still going very well right now. And you, you, uh, as a pitcher, you expect bumps in the road. These things happen, especially in Aosho. They are a solid team. Aosho 13 and 6 so far on the season. We're just, uh, you know, we, we've seen so many blowouts for Johnson County because they're such a good team that here Chambers has given up two runs and we're acting like he's having a rough time. Gets to the one, two there, and we'll look. What's his 87th pitch? Get a strikeout here to end it. Being very cautious around Beck here. Obviously, he did hit the home run last time into left center, so can't be too careful with the guy that you already gave up a bomb to. That one was a high end inside. And we'll go back to a full count. Runner will be in motion here from first to second. It's going to be Brady in motion. I want to hit a really nonchalant swing, just poking that right to shortstop, easily cuts, and that will retire the side. A walk again for Chambers, but it did nothing. 
two strikeouts, and we're going to the bottom of the fourth. Number one, obviously, is safety. We definitely call 811 to find out if there are any buried lines, fiber optic, whether it be telephone or pipeline or anything. Don't take a chance. Don't think you know and say, well, there's, I don't remember anything being put in there. Call 811 and make sure that that's identified that there isn't something there before you make that crossing. Because in the end, we want everybody going home. At Kansas Insurance, we know one size doesn't fit all. In fact, our whole mindset is based on customized policies for you and your families. We're local, and we do what we do because we care about you. Think of us as brokers for your insurance needs. Working with Kansas Insurance gets you the award-winning service. Back in here, Johnson County, Dylan Bean on the mic here with you. Three to two game as we enter the bottom of the fourth. Clemson still on the mound here for the Panthers. Edwards up to bat, and then it will be the top of the order after that with McClure on deck. Edwards, last time he was up, struck out. Has some serious speed when he gets on the bases, however, with 15 stolen bases so far this season. Yeah, you know, just reflecting on what we've seen so far with the Cavaliers being so interested in bunting in seemingly odd situations, this would be one where I would expect the bunt, and there we are. That's why I'm in the business, folks. Right to the pitcher, and nice play by Clemenson. Like the quick work of Edwards, but nice try by Edwards, not down the line. Enough for the speed, sir, and one down here for the Cavs. Who made the throw? Patrick. Who made the throw? Uh, the third base. No, 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 pitcher. Pitcher, okay. And one will hit McClure again. Oof. The second time he's been hit today, and that one a mean bat flip back again. This time it just hit him in the leg, so nothing in the upper head region, but he will take a second stroll to a base for free. He's thinking there's got to be better ways to get on base, man. It's easy to look at it from now. It's like, hey, man, you get a free base. Yeah, you're not the one being hit by an 83-mile-an-hour fastball. Yeah. In two months, he'll look back on it as a free base. Right now, it feels like a lot of pain. That one's going to be marked down as a pass ball just off the catcher's glove. An easy stroll to second was McClure. So now in scoring position is him with 2-3-4 coming up next with one out for Clemenson. That's the second pass ball on Moore. So, you know, he, he earned some good some good grace with that pick off that pick back early in the game, but a couple mistakes now that have given up bases for the Cavs. Fleck getting to hit from the right side against the lefty pitcher. Look, two for two so far in this game with a double and a single. That one in there for his first strike, two and one count. That was, he needs the home run and the triple for that cycle. Well, now you jinxed it. But that was, uh, I was going to say, that was Clevinson's 80th pitch. So he's definitely getting up there. That one outside on the spinner. Just the one Three. arm up in the bullpen for. Naosho. Looks like it's the same one. Paca or Pacha. I don't know if we figured out how to say that one. That's too far inside, and it will be a walk. Second one issued by Clemenson. 
And that will bring up Jack Mosh to the plate again. After that is Brewer on deck. So definitely it's going to bring. I was wondering if he would be taken out. I was about to say that you would expect if Mosh does something that that would end Clemenson's day. Could it be done right now? Doesn't look like it. He's keeping the ball in his glove. So just a just a mound like visit here. Not. I would assume if Mosh got on, yeah, they wouldn't let him pitch to Brewer. Right. Would be my ultimate guess is they would not let him pitch to Brewer if Mosh got on. Even with two outs, he might let him pitch to it. But yeah, I, I think mean, the I think the only way that he sees himself into the fifth uh, would would. It could maybe be a, a double play if he could hit if he could get the first double play of the day, which is something we haven't seen even a whole lot this season. Um, and I think that could get could extend his out again to the fifth. But you know he he's had a really effective day, and it's just finally those those cracks are are starting to widen. Cavs only one to the good though. That one foul tip right into the glove. Okay, in the first, last at bat, a single for Mosh. It will be inside. Even the cow that ones. It's a good pitch there. That would be really hard for Mosh to extend his hands on. And it's around that area that's been being called a strike a lot today. But good job as well by Mosh to spit on it. I want to watch your lips again. Nearly hit a second guy in the head. After the after the hit by pitch on McClure the first time around, we haven't seen um, to, uh, bad control from Clemenson, but I think that Every fatigue is also showing was, through here. Every once in a while, it looks like he's just kind of losing a pitch. That one will be in there for strike two, two and two count. Mosh has got to be hoping to end Clemenson's day here with a uh, emphatic send-off. Here's the pitch by Clemenson. That one's going to be fouled away. Clemenson so far today, three and a third, giving up seven hits, hit two batters, giving up a couple of walks as well. Not holding the runners very close at the bases. That one is hit in the left field. Will it stay? It's not going to stay fair. Is it going to stay in bounds? It will. No one's going to get to that and will just be tossed back in. But there's a long foul there. Taking his time here, Clemenson. Clemenson definitely not on the same wavelength as Chambers when it comes to the pitch clock in his head. <laughs> definitely slower. Only 2-2. Two, two, big strikeout, however, for Clemenson. He sits down uh, for the second time they, today. Uh, do they let him face Brewer? I mean, there was uh, there were some... Big, uh, I've said it a few, couple times now, I should maybe find another phrase, but some big cracks showing there in Clemson. But they are going to let him face Brewer. A dangerous decision, but, you know, it's on Brewer to make them pay. Brewer, a home run opposite field his first time about and then hit one off the wall with no hop for a double his second time up. And that they, one ends up low. That was Clemson's 90th pitch. I could imagine if Brewer does anything here, his day would be done. More than likely, it's going to be his last batter would be my guess. Yeah, I think even if he gets him out, uh, they they probably say, good job and uh, good day. That would have put him through four, three and two-thirds right now. Brewer hits wow. that one into Line. right there. That's going to score at least one. He's in one to third, and he'll stay there. An RBI single? No. The throw gets away. Nice base running 
for Brewer, and he's going to be marked down for a double, I believe. Yep. That might mark it down as a throwing error with a single. I think I think that I think you're right. That should be a double, uh, just because it was he, he advanced on them throwing the ball in field, which is a really heady play there, almost like a, like an MLB the Show type stuff, grabbing that extra base there. Love to see it from Brewer, and they're still sticking with Clemenson. So, I guess we don't know much. Yeah, keeping him in here, looking to try to get him through four now over ninety pitches. Flex standing on third. Brewer standing on second after another double. He's got four RBIs and three extra base hits today. Is Brewer. Oh. That one hit a ton in the left center. Forget about it. Way gone in the left center. A big time Cavalier crank off the bat of Hepburn. He had been struck out twice. He gets all of it this time, and he's broken this game open. A 7-2 to two game. I got to say, I'm feeling a bit of validation because we were saying they should have taken Clevinson out and uh, they were just absolutely made to pay dearly for the fact that they left their starter in there against Hepburn. And now you'd have to imagine he's done for the day as he is. So a risky call from the Neo Show coaching staff does not pay off. It costs them four runs and the Cavaliers now up by more than a swing when we come back after the pitching change. Johnson County Sports Live. Back. Once you got a couple of guys on, you should take Welcome back in. Here's Johnson County yeah. Sports Live. Yeah. Just talking about the uh, little pitching mishap that time. You know, we're over 90 pitches on the side of Clemenson. Let him pitch to Brewer. Gave up the hit to Brewer. Scored one there. Kept him in. Let him pitch to Hepburn. And Hepburn made him pay with a huge crank. To left center. Yeah, you know, we, uh, we we sort of highlighted that that catchers uh, were expecting the, them to make a, a big impact on this game because Moore had some big moments early on, and uh, of course Kilgore's been involved as well. But the catcher who's playing DH, Kyle Hepburn, with the biggest moment of this game so far, you'd have to say. Brewer four RBIs in this game. However, Hepburn just. Reached out now with three RBIs with that home run. That's how all seven of the runs have been scored. Potches coming back in here on the side of Neo Show. And the relief pitching for Clemenson first up. It's going to be Tisdale to meet him there so far today. 0 for 2 with a fly out to center. Hard contact there, however, and then a K is next time around. Looking at Patch's stats, as this one's ripped foul. He uh, comes in with a 4-5 ERA, has given up one extra base hit, only a double, has, ne has not been taken deep yet this year in four innings of work. That one ends up a little bit low as well. Two and one count. Tisdale, one of two players not to have reached base today so far. Just him and Edwards in the starting nine. The only other one not to get a hit is McClure. However, he's been hit twice, so hasn't gotten too much of a chance. And it's Tisdale, short hop to third. And again, nice play and a scoop. And that'll end the inning. Nice scoop job that time by Coaster at first base. But the damage has been done. 
for Johnson County. 7-2 lead, a big four spot there in the fourth. We'll come back at Johnson County Sports Live. Call insurance agent. Hello, customer. Oh, great. Uh, I just had a quick question about my insurance. You are 312th in line. Oh, it's just a real quick question. Would you like a callback in six hours? Sometimes humans are just more helpful. Hey, Max, I can answer your insurance question. Awesome. I appreciate it. Farm Bureau Financial Services. It's your future. Let's protect it. Contact Farm Bureau agent Anthony Brown in Eudora today at 785-615-0516. At Kansas Insurance, we know one size doesn't fit all. In fact, our whole mindset is based on customized policies for you and your families. We're local, and we do what we do because we care about you. Think of us as brokers for your insurance needs. Working with Kansas Insurance gets you the award-winning service and attention to detail that only an independent agency can provide. All across Kansas, we're here to help you manage and plan for all types of risk. Contact a local agent today. Kansas Insurance. Local. Independent. Serving you. Welcome back in here, Johnson County Sports Live. Dylan and Reed here on the broadcast booth with you. We we're talking about how different this game is with just one swing. It came from Hepburn, a big three run shot on an absolute nuke shot to left center. And it's changed the face of this game now, seven to two with a big lead. And we've got a pitching change. Also, a pitching change. You want to. Tell me a little bit about the pitching change here, Reed. Yeah, I'll pull up the stats, but they're going to Maddox Burkett, someone we are familiar with from having called a couple games before that he has uh, pitched. A, he was pitcher of the week earlier on in this uh, for, for the conference in the KJ, uh, Kansas Jayhawks Community College Conference. Looking at the stats here on the season, rocking a 503 ERA, has given up two home runs. He has 11 earned runs, six unearned against him, which is interesting. And in 19 and two thirds innings work, he's given up 20 hits. So a 137 whip, which is walks plus hits per innings pitched. My favorite stat to judge a pitcher. So interesting. They ended Chambers' day at 90 pitches. We'll get back to that thought in a second. That one hitting to left center. It was near the warning track, about two or three feet away from the wall, but not enough doing a couple extra push-ups tonight. It will be Rodriguez on the side of Neisho. Try to send that one over the wall next time. So wrapping up the day for Chambers through four innings of work, he faced 18 batters, throwing 90 pitches, 50 strikes, 40 balls, gave up two earned runs, four walks, five Ks. Stranded four runners, and the Panthers had a 1-4-3 batting average against him. Westerman now up to face Burkett. That's a big swing and a miss. Put himself in an 0-2 hole. Had a couple of backwards Ks to start off this game. Burkett trying to make quick work here. One out, 0-2, oh and that one is going to be watched a third time just off the plate is what Mr. Umpire says, and we'll go to one and two. Yeah, and, you know, Burkett, he comes in with a comfortable lead, which is interesting how how, how, do, how that maybe affects pitching, you know. You, you might be a little more risky, um, a little more willing to attack the zone, which is not at all necessarily a bad thing. Um, but, you know, the, this Panthers offense, despite only putting up two runs, has been, uh, they've been more situational at times. So Burkett definitely wants to make sure he avoids giving up any runs uh, on account of being casual. Big swing and miss that time. This time he goes down swinging, but 0 for 3 with three Ks is Westerman. Here I'm talking about him being casual as he blows it by the batter at 91. I don't think he's, uh, he's too nonchalant out there. Touching the 90s. I don't know if we saw Burkett really touching 90s the last time we were out here. I didn't really see many 90s pop up on the radar gun. He definitely, though, is uh, is familiar with the K. So 
averaging over the course of nine innings, 12.8 strikeouts. That was his 29th on the season. 68th of his Johnson County career. Coach, he's trying to just fix the uh, the pitch thing in his ear, I believe, is what they're okay. using and what they're trying to fix right now. And I saw Coach Yeager, the third base coach, head out and grab something. With no one on here, there's nothing really stopping them from going back to the old school methods, except for the fact that maybe they're not used to it anymore. But if a runner were to get on base, they definitely want to get that technology back and functional. And it's he, like it is working. They did. He did. Pay he got that a piece of that one. My word. Huge hack that he barely tipped the ball on. Coaster so far this season. Dangerous hitter with a 382 average, just one home run. And Sammy doesn't get a piece. Interesting. I thought that we were already at two strikes. But all the two two here. That one will bounce to the plate and we'll get to a full count here, delivering to Coaster. This is something the Panthers have done really well, even though I think right now they could be doing better to capitalize. A lot of times they've gotten to the full count, no matter how good the pitcher is, is dealing at the moment. Um, that's a really good job of settling in and working the count. Oh, hit right back to Burkett, stopped right on a dime, and will throw Still it. Still makes the Have play. To make sure that he's okay after that. Ooh. Impressive that he still made that play to end the inning. Looks like he's doing okay, but man, I'd have hit him right in the sweet, sweet spot or some good meter or something like that. Cause that one looked like it hurt. We'll come back on Johnson County Sports Lab. Hey folks, save a thousand bucks on your interior painting project this winter. Hire Absolute Painting during November through February and qualify for 10% off your project, a free paint upgrade, and a free color consultation to make sure you choose the perfect colors to transform your home. This amazing offer only lasts until our winter calendar is booked and spots are filling up fast. Call now and save a thousand bucks on your interior project. No money down affordable monthly payment options are available. This offer won't last long, so call now to save a thousand bucks on your interior project with Absolute Painting, where quality is absolute. Number one, obviously, is safety. We definitely call 811 to find out if there are any buried lines, fiber optic, whether it be telephone or pipeline or anything. Don't take a chance. Don't think you know and say, well, there's, I don't remember anything being put in there. Call 811 and make sure that that's identified that there isn't something there before you make that crossing. Because in the end, we want everybody going home. For more than 20 years, Gherkin Rental has been the place to go to get the job done in eastern Kansas and western Missouri with a huge selection of quality equipment from roll-offs to trailers to... Welcome back in here, Johnson County Sports Live. Dylan Reed here in the booth with you. Jordan Black going to lead it off as the 7-8-9 batters, Kilgore and Edwards right behind Black. It's the same pitcher in Pacha for Neosho. Yeah, there's no one up in either pen. I only mentioned the Johnson County one as well because we just saw Burkett take that comebacker. But off, off of potentially any immediate assessment, seems that He's all right to continue, so it's going to be Pacha for this inning, at least. One and one here for Black A. Two one. Or two one, excuse me. One high. Watching her lips again here is Black three and one. Coming off the walk for Black. He's just one for one with the walk. Could he get another? Free base and add to the OBP? He sure will. 
So they walk there, still in the bottom of the fifth. Couple more innings left to play, but you will stay thousand on the first game. Third walk issued on the side of the Panthers. Obviously hit McClure also twice. So the Cavaliers, nine hits, three walks, two hit by pitches, 14 total base runners. Big swing and a miss that time from Kilgore. Yeah, the other catcher hit the three-run home run in Hepburn. Trying to see what Kilgore can do here at the plate. One for two so far today. Struck out looking with the bases loaded last time he was up. Black's getting uh, getting happy feet over at first. You might see him take off here. Pitch that one will slide off the plate. He also might just be messing with uh, Pacha just for the fun of it. Now with a right-handed pitcher, the Cavaliers runners at first can be a little more comfortable. They'll have more time to react to any potential pickoff moves. Count is back to full here. Uh, if you do get Kilgore up, it's Edwards up next and then McClure at the top of the order. Yeah, Cavs would love to turn over the order with fewer than two outs. That one, a liner right to right field, trying to get back in will in time. It looked like it was going to land, but just kind of kept carrying more and more back. Ended up in the glove of the right fielder. And Fry, so Edwards going to try to change things here with one out. Still black at first. There is Checked that. him once. Pickoff doesn't happen. Um, I we called it. I called it last time that the that we might have seen Edwards bunt, and he dropped down a good one, but couldn't beat it out. This would be another potential bunting situation, but never mind that idea. That one finds a hole right between third and shortstop. A little bit of beneficial playing on turf on that one, as that one skipped through both defenders. Now second and third as the top of the order comes back up. Not the uh, not the prettiest of singles, but he's standing on first base just like anyone else. And I said that the Cavs would love to turn over the order with fewer than two outs, and they did just that to get it to McClure. Oh, boy. But there are the two outs. Pretty bad location to hit that one into Beck. Easy double play, pretty much one of the easiest he's probably made in his career. Still 7-2 when we come back. Johnson County Sports Live. Save the Children believes childhood without food is unimaginable. Yet around the world, children are suffering from the worst famine in our lifetime, coupled with conflict, poverty, climate change, and more. Join Save the Children and get fed up. Fed up with the lack of progress. Fed up with the injustice. Learn how you can get involved in the fight against childhood hunger at savethechildren.org slash get fed up. I'm fed up. We're, We're fed, fed up. up. We're fed up. More time Before you wake up in the wild Our natural world needs us now Step by step, side by side, together We can find a way to ensure that all life on Earth can thrive To learn more about how you can help protect and conserve nature Visit nature.org Welcome back in here, Johnson County Sports Live. Dylan and Reed with you. 
Maddox still on the mound here for Johnson County on the side of Neosho. We got one more in the bullpen. Not exactly sure which number it is yet, but he is looking like a sidearm style pitcher. Reminiscent of Peter Moylan, who is a very obscure Royals player that I really liked for no reason. Came from down under and threw the same. The Australian, Peter Moylan. Leading off this inning is Fry, Brendan Fry. Big power hitter here for the Panthers. Trying to get some offensive momentum going. Still down 7-2. Have not scored since the second inning if you're a Panthers fan. Yeah. Fry comes in 0 for 1 with a walk that he worked against Chambers. I want to come right back to it. Major footage. So, yeah, you know, it, it, it doesn't matter. You know, you, you you see the net in front of you. You can think about the net all you really want. But, man, it's I mean, that's the whole idea. You know, you, exactly. so you can watch the game. Uh, we can watch the game unencumbered but also be safe from, you know, breaking your face. I even got I even got a window also in front of me, too, <laughs> like you're calling this game. I got the net, and then I got a window. You know, it's it's just your body looking out for you. Better, better safe than sorry. 2-1 here from Maddox. That one ends up in there right on the outside corner. We even the counts at two. At least we're not Jake McClure where we cannot get out of the way and it potentially hits you in the head or shoulder. I saw a thing on Instagram the other day. It was guy, I think a guy got hit seven times in a doubleheader. Oh, boy. Oof. I was just like, ooh. At yeah. that point, I'm just like, okay, just, just sit me down at this point. Like, I mean, it's like, it's like obviously everybody just like wants to throw it right at me. So, you know, just everybody just wants, doesn't want me in the game, apparently. You know, I said, thankfully, we're not Jake McClure, but if I got the option to be Jake McClure, I would take that. Just to, just to give him a little bit of credit. He's pretty darn cool. <laughs> so, Fry walks the second time on the day. If anything, a few walks have been issued here from the Cavaliers. We're starting off, obviously, Chambers now. Maddox has walked a couple. Or excuse me, he's just walked one. Failed to uh, call it out before, but I definitely should have. Burkett is a Jayhawk commit. So if you happen to be a KU baseball fan, that's a name you can expect to hear even more going forward. I will be looking at that. I am a KU baseball fan, so I will be looking at that. Ten hits on the side of the Cavaliers, just two for the Panthers. Trying to change that here is Moore. He has one of those two hits. The only other hit that they have is the home run by Beck at the bottom of the order. Brewer is holding Fry very tight at first. Be interesting to see if Burkett ever tries a pickoff over there. Owen fouls straight back again. He was up to count at twos apiece. Three more had the really good start to this game. Has been really honest and quiet since. As it had a lot of opportunity. That one is swing and a miss as well. Ways K had time for more, and he will go down one for three for the day. Already will bring up Leonard. Already Burkett's second K, thirtieth on the season for him. So he'll be uh, he'll be putting the K in KU as well. Next in a very solid job here so far. Left us the one base runner. That one popped up. Will it stay in play to make a play? No, it's going to touch the net. No, it looked like 
Brewer had a chance to make the play, but a little bit timid right next to that fence. Don't blame him. I've ran into fences like that, Conson, plenty of times. You know. It was just obscured by the post here, so you guys didn't see that one, but it was near to Brewer. I think that if he had perfect awareness of where he was, which is you'd have to have like five sets of eyes to make that happen, he could have made the play, but I don't think anyone will be faulting him for staying safe, especially with a score like this. And it's going to be a hat trick of strikeouts for Leonard. Burkett also with a hat trick of strikeouts. That one ends up low. Thinking about going for a second. Quick to get up was Kilgore. Nice play by him to keep it in front. Thought for a second Fry was going to take off. Delivered way outside. 2 0, two outs, still only two hits for the Panthers. Man on first came from the walk of Brendan Fry. Second time he's reached base today. Two -oh delivery will spin in there for strike one. You saw it. Dale really thought about offering at that one, but. It was in such an awkward spot that even if he had, it probably would have only been bad contact. So probably just best to uh, let that one go as he did live to fight another day. Here's six to four. And that will be the retiring out of the inning. And we will go here to the bottom of the six, Johnson County up five. At Kansas Insurance, we know one size doesn't fit all. In fact, our whole mindset is based on customized policies for you and your families. We're local, and we do what we do because we care about you. Think of us as brokers for your insurance needs. Working with Kansas Insurance gets you the award-winning service and attention to detail that only an independent agency can provide. All across Kansas, we're here to help you manage and plan for all types of risk. Contact a local agent today. Kansas Insurance. Local. Independent. Serving you. Question, what will you find on all over-the-counter or OTC medicine packages to help you choose the right drug and use it safely? The answer, the drug facts label. This label lists the medicine's active ingredients and purpose, how much to take, and warnings you should know before using it. Remember, even OTC medicines you buy without a prescription can cause side effects you don't want. So follow the information listed on the drug facts label. For more information, visit FDA.gov slash drug facts label. A message from the U.S. Food and Drug Administration. Six. Welcome back in here, Johnson County Sports Live. New pitcher on the mound here for the Panthers. Want to run through for me here, Reed? Yeah, so we got Thomas Kelsey, hails out of Lee Summit, Missouri. And looking at his stats, they are uh, they're sort of intriguing. He's played in three games to two and one, two and a third innings work. Is here's the first offering, and you just saw that sidearm delivery that he's got there. It'll be very interesting to deal with for the batters. Uh, but he's given up one run. It was unearned, so he has a zero ERA, despite having hit two batters and giving up a hit and a run, as well as a walk, two strikeouts. So a very small sample size, sort of all over the place. But he is rocking a zero ERA through three appearances here, making his fourth on the season. I'm sure McClure saw that uh, two hit by pitches in two innings and said, oh, cool, I'm ninth up. I'm ninth up. Thank you. Appreciate it. I don't want to be hit a third time in the same game. I went in there for the first strike thrown. 
by him. So two and one. It's very interesting somebody seeing somebody in, in, only in college throwing sidearm. A lot of times sidearm ends up being uh, the option for medical reasons as that one's going to get through. Sorry, Dylan, you want to take that one? And nearly stopped by Beck. It's going to be a single ground ball right through the infield. Again, benefited by the turf there. Uh, but yeah, Another base hit. a lot of times it's for medical reasons, but then sometimes there are just some guys where it works better for them. And it's just something that, you know, like they're joking around with their friends. Like, what if I did this? And they're like, oh my gosh, I'm, I can't stop throwing strikes. Um, and so you never know somebody, of course, in their younger, younger 20s could be a different variety of reasons. And a stolen base there, and he's going to keep going. Fleck will take third base off of that odd exchange there. The... Uh, Failed throw by the catcher Moore. Tried to catch Fleck and instead handed him an extra base. So he now stands over at third. That one in there and that's going to squeak through into center field. We'll score another run and that's going to be an RBI single credited to Mosh. So his second base hit of the day, two for four, the couple of singles. And the first guy to get an RBI outside of Brewer and Hepburn today. It's a nice little base hit. Again, benefited by turf, not slowing down that baseball, letting it get through. Throw it off to that right side into the net again. Brewer. Have big number, big numbers today. Excuse me, three for three, a couple of doubles, and a home run. Once again, four RBIs on the day. Big reason as to why they are winning this game by six. Thirteen hits so far today for Johnson County. That one is just checking them. That time was Kelsey. Brewer, this one's going to be popped up in play, and is it going to be made? A little bit wow. of confusion. Nice play. Working himself all the way out into right field. That was Rodriguez, second baseman on the side of the Panthers with a nice play, and it will be one out here that, uh, at the bottom of the sixth. That puts into context what I was call talking about before when Mosh made those plays twice in a row look very easy. It is absolutely not with the sun out here. We've also got a pinch hitter here. So a pinch hitter here coming in. It's going to be number 16, Riker uh, Edward. No. 20, 26, 26, Mike and Miller. Excuse me. I was like, I was I was looking at it. I was like, Mike and Miller. I was looking at it. I was like, that is at 16. So he's coming in for the DH Hepburn. Hepburn's day is done after hitting that home run. He was one for three with three RBIs and that homer today. I could be wrong, but I would expect to see Hepburn catch the second game, and maybe that's why they're getting him out a little bit early in this one. You also got Mike and Miller, who's also a catcher. 34 AB so far this year, a 412 batting average. Rips that one. That one ripped here into left center, and it's going to be chased down on the warning track, and it's going to move everybody back. It'll keep Mosh at first base. Nice play in center field at the time. It was Brady making his way into left center. So with that sidearm delivery, Kelsey gets it in there around 68 miles an hour, so it's definitely not ripping in there but a lot of times the side armors don't need to because coming in from such a weird angle that's so tough to pick up um, and there's of course all, all the kinds of movement that you're used to gets changed you know a, 
a slider can have almost a bit of rise, a, a curve falls in a way you've never seen. Two seamers are, attack you in a totally different way with arm side run. Uh, and so it's a, it is a, a, a mind bend when you come up against a sidearm pitcher. On a hit right there in the right field, and that will retire the side. A couple of fly balls and an 8-2 to two ball game. One run scored for the Cavaliers. Looking to close out this first game here in the 7th, 8-2 to two when we come back. Dan, you need to go. Really? It's important. I feel fine. Look, you cannot mess around with this kind of stuff. Some cancers, that... man, we just don't want to lose you from something we could have caught. What do I need to do? You just give your doctor a call. They'll tell you what screening test you need. Fine. Can I have my pie now? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> We're back in here, Johnson County. Dylan Vanderveen, Reed on with you. Doesn't look like any defensive changes. The only change that we had was that Mike and Miller in that DH spot. Still a pitching up is Maddox. So we're going to close out this first one here in the seven innings. Okay. Left fielder, Gretchen Davies, center fielder, number seven, Gavin Brady. He has grounded out and walked so far, has David. And your third time through the order here if you're on the side of the Panthers. It's interesting how close they've been as they are now on the brink of having this game ended with a, a, a pretty crooked score. I mentioned how many times they've managed to, to work, it, work it to a full count. Um, and I think that they've had a, they've had a lot of positives, not, you know, not come around to score, which of course is the, the nature of the game with baseball that you can do a lot of good work and have nothing to show for it. And in the end, having two hits up on the board, it, it, it doesn't feel actually accurate to how their day has gone, but it's right. Two hits, two runs. Uh, and you know, they, they're six runs down here and about to, uh, to run out of time here. Uh, once Chambers settled in, he pitched fairly well. And Maddox has shut the door completely. That's a K as well. So going down swinging again is Dale the second time today he did that. Fourth K for Burkett. One more and he would match Chambers' tally. Beck, of course, homered earlier on in this game, giving his team a temporary lead. One here for Maddox to Beck. That one too far inside. He is the nine hitter, but crushed probably the biggest home run of the day. That was way gone when he hit his. The longest, you're saying? Yeah, either that one or the one by Hepburn. Hepburn yeah, was Hepburn's was certainly the, 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 the biggest, if you're saying, in terms of game importance. But if you're saying longest, yeah, Beck ripped that one out there. Both right in the same place, right around that scoreboard out there. So, and left center. That one ends up just off the plate, three and one count. Two outs away here from securing the third win 
of this series. Looking for the sweep in the nine game or a nine inning game here coming up after this one. Stay tuned for that on Johnson County Sports Live. It's going to be the same place, same announcers as well. Yeah, that uh, th this win would also seal the series. Make sure it doesn't become a split. And Burkett got his fifth K and now could seal the game and does just that. Two outs there now here for Johnson County. So one more out left to play here for Maddox. It's going to bring Rodriguez up for the fourth time here today. He's 0 for 2 with a walk. That one ends up high and over his head, trying to spin it in. Thirteen to two in terms of hits, no errors on the either side. Eight to two in runs. Show you why really one swing of the bat and Hepburn changed the entire complexity of this game. I think I don't know if no errors is right for them. I think that the throw to it. Try to catch flex stealing. They ended up giving him an extra base. Should probably go down as an error. Oh, you're right. You're right. Uh, but no, but no, you're reading the scoreboard, which has no errors. But I think that there is one against the Panthers that is not counted up there. Because I believe the operator was in here talking to you, getting some stats on hits while that play went down. Yeah, I did forget about that. I was, yeah, I was just trying to double check the stat book for them. Yep. But, so one error on the side of the Panthers. And a couple passed balls as well, all coming from their catcher more. So uh, I, I called that already. You know, he had that that early um, pick back, which was awesome, and you know, such a great play for a catcher. And then throughout the rest of the day, it's been a little bit rough for him behind the plate. That's going to get the count to full here. Three and two, two outs. Maddox looking to end the first of two games here and go up three nothing in this series with the Panthers. Here's the pitch. That one will end up low, so we'll go to another batter. It will end up with Westerman, who has struck out three times today, twice looking, and once swinging the last time he was up. So Westerman here, if he strikes out, if Maddox strikes out here, he'll give Westerman the golden sombrero of four Ks. Big swing there. He clearly had his eyes set on left center field, but didn't make any contact with the fastball. About the same spot, couldn't catch up to it. Quickly in a hole for 0-2 to Westerman. Maddox looking to close this game out. Runner at first, looks like he could... Go, no. That one inside, and it's going to touch him. It touched the jersey, so Westerman gets a break. No golden sombrero, and will take first base after the ball touched his jersey. And all of a sudden, it's a little bit uncomfortable. I mean, honestly, you're still fine if you are the Cavaliers, but you know, two runners on when they were so close to this game being over just a couple pitches ago. Not particularly ideal, but also... No alarm bells are ringing right now. You've got to expect that Burkett will comfortably get out of this one, even if he happens to give up a run, no problem. One didn't fall for a strike, so 1-0. and oh. Make the pitch. That one you end up high. That one seemed like that got away from him a bit. Coming into 88, yeah, Kilgore going to go and have a chat with him. Not a bad idea, especially since they're so close to the end here. It's not, uh, you know, it's not like this is high pressure. Uh, so just go and tell him, hey man, you got this. Throw, do what you've been doing all day long. Uh, just fire it in there, round 90. But that one, he tried to get some. He was looking for a chase, and I think it maybe slipped out of the finger a little early. Would have been very costly if Kilgore couldn't have brought that one in and given up an extra base to both the runners, let them both get into scoring position. 3-0 in there for a strike right down the middle. 
Long way here to climb the ladder back. Swing and a miss, and just like that, two strikes, and Maddox back at it, one pitch away here from the game. Could he, could Burkett look for his fifth K? Would be the 10th for Johnson, the Johnson County staff so far, or on the day. There's Maddox, the delivery, and that will be a ground ball to the shortstop, and that will do it with the play. Nice running play that time, Fleck. And that'll close it out, 8-2, 13-2 in hits. Johnson County, a big-time win. Here to go, 17-6 and six on the season. We'll bring you back with the small post-game show, as well as the second game after this, Johnson County Sports Live. State coordinates of new land acquisition. Oh, well, you know that big oak tree that got struck by lightning? Negative. The barn with the funny cow mural? Negative. One-eyed scarecrow? Negative. Giant water tower? You're not from here, are you? I've never seen him. Robots don't know you. We do. Hey, how's your dad doing? For over 80 years, we built relationships first and plans second. It's your future. Let's protect it. Contact Farm Bureau agent Anthony Brown in Eudora today at 785-615-0516. Just like the Cardinals are striving for success, Caw Valley State Bank's mission is your success. At Caw Valley State Bank, they provide the best, most efficient, courteous, and professional banking services possible. And at Caw Valley, they recognize that the customer and their satisfaction is the most important ingredient to growing their community. With all the services you've come to expect from the hometown partner you deserve, Caw Valley State Bank, online at kvsb.com. A proud supporter of Eudora Schools. I used to drive an ambulance as an EMT, and I've always tried to be a safe driver. If people knew what I know, lives could be saved. In my car, if I see a truck or bus taking a turn, I know to take my time. When big vehicles turn right, they may swing wide to make the turn. If you try to sneak in, well, it's a lesson you'd rather not learn the hard way. When trucks and buses turn, let's you and I wait. It's our roads, it's our safety. feel fine. Look, you cannot mess around with this kind of stuff. Some cancers, that... man, we just don't want to lose you from something we could have caught. What I need to do? You just give your doctor a call. They'll tell you what screening test you need. Fine. Can I have my pie now? Oh, man. <laughs> High quality foods, friendly service, great prices, and a connection to the community that is unsurpassed. That's Gene's Heartland Foods in Eudora. Family owned, Gene's Heartland Foods offers a convenient one-stop shop, delivering the everyday essentials you need to specialty items from around the world. Gene's friendly staff is here to help you find exactly what you're looking for. You have options when it comes to feeding your family. Choose to support local. Choose Gene's Heartland Foods, 1402 Church Street in Eudora, or online at heartlandfoodstores.com. At Kansas Insurance, we know one size doesn't fit all. In fact, our whole mindset is based on customized policies for you and your families. We're local, and we do what we do because we care about you. Think of us as brokers for your insurance needs. Working with Kansas Insurance gets you the award-winning service and attention to detail that only an independent agency can provide. All across Kansas, we're here to help you manage and plan for all types of risk. Contact a local agent today. Kansas Insurance. Local. Independent. Serving you. Hey folks, save a thousand bucks on your interior painting project this winter. Hire Absolute Painting during November through February and qualify for 10% off your project, a free paint upgrade, and a free color consultation to make sure you choose the perfect colors to transform your home. This amazing offer only lasts until our winter calendar is booked and spots are filling up fast. Call now and save a thousand bucks on your interior project. 
No money down affordable monthly payment options are available. This offer won't last long, so call now to save a thousand bucks on your interior project with Absolute Painting, where quality is absolute. I used to drive an ambulance as an EMT, and I've always tried to be a safe driver. If people knew what I know, lives could be saved. In my car, if I see a truck or bus taking a turn, I know to take my time. When big vehicles turn right, they may swing wide to make the turn. If you try to sneak in, well, it's a lesson you'd rather not learn the hard way. When trucks and buses turn, let's you and I wait. It's our roads, it's our safety. At Kansas Insurance, we know one size doesn't fit all. In fact, our whole mindset is based on customized policies for you and your families. We're local, and we do what we do because we care about you. Think of us as brokers for your insurance needs. Working with Kansas Insurance gets you the award-winning service and attention to detail that only an independent agency can provide. All across Kansas, we're here to help you manage and plan for all types of risk. Contact a local agent today. Kansas Insurance. Local. Independent. Serving you. The smoothest, the creamiest, the most amazing ice cream you've ever had. That's what you'll find at Main Street Scoops and Sweets in historic downtown Eudora, Kansas. With over 100 mouth-watering Wisconsin-made ice cream flavors, including dairy-free and gluten-free options. The bakery is always serving up the most heavenly cookies, cakes, and so much more. Ask about Main Street's custom cakes for that special occasion. What are you waiting for? Come make the sweetest of memories at Main Street Scoops and Sweets in downtown Eudora, where it's always ice cream time. Are you looking for a trusted partner in pet care? Look no further than Eudora Animal Hospital, proudly serving Eudora and the surrounding area since 1975. Eudora Animal Hospital offers a wide range of services, including wellness exams, surgeries, routine vaccinations, and emergency care. Hi guys, just wanted to say thank you from Eudora Animal Hospital for all your support and Go Cards! Schedule an appointment by calling 785-542-3265 or visit EudoraVet.com. Call insurance agent. Hello, customer. Oh, great. Uh, I just had a quick question about my... in here at Johnson County Sports Live. Dylan Vanderveen here on the mic with you. It was a good first game here for Johnson County, 8-2. A big swing by Hepburn was the one that changed it at the post-game show. Here with Dylan Vanderveen. Reed just stepped away here for a second, but Looking here in between these to possibly get a player or something like that up here at the end of the double header. Right now, not too concerned about it, but we might do something as long with, with it in the near future. But Hepburn, a huge 3-1 shot, got Johnson County ahead 7-2. to Brewer also with four RBIs on the day. With He was three for four with a home run, a couple of doubles as well. So two big days by those two gentlemen right there. Everybody else along with them. Almost every single person got on base that started. Tisdale the only one that did not receive any type of on-base percentage help today. On the starting lineup out of the nine starters. We will step away here for just a few minutes. And we will bring back here at the start of that second game when it gets underway. For more than 20 years, Gherkin Rental has been the place to go to get the job done in eastern Kansas and western Missouri. With a huge selection of quality equipment, from roll-offs to trailers, telehandlers to generators, power washers to popcorn makers, experienced equipment professionals, and clean, well-maintained tools to help you get the job done right the first time. Gherkin Rental. Stop by any of their 13 locations across the KC Metro or call 855-GHERKINS. That's 855-437-5367.
The smoothest, the creamiest, the most amazing ice cream you've ever had. That's what you'll find at Main Street Scoops and Sweets in historic downtown Eudora, Kansas. With over 100 mouth-watering Wisconsin-made ice cream flavors, including dairy-free and gluten-free options. The bakery is always serving up the most heavenly cookies, cakes, and so much more. Ask about Main Street's custom cakes for that special occasion. What are you waiting for? Come make the sweetest of memories at Main Street Scoops and Sweets in downtown Eudora, where it's always ice cream time. The MVPs of BBQ. That's Barbed Wire Barbecue in Eudora. Family owned and operated, Barbed Wire Barbecue delivers great food and small town hospitality at a valued price. High quality hickory smoked meats, house seasonings, and time tested recipes put Barbed Wire Barbecue a cut above the rest. Kick off your weekend with their delicious brunch on Saturdays and Sundays and enjoy game day your way with Barbed Wire Game Day Packs. Visit them at 601 East 10th in Eudora or see their full lineup of flavors at barbedwirebarbecue.com. The Supplemental Security Income Program provides monthly payments to help meet basic needs, like putting food on the table, paying the rent, or buying new shoes for growing feet. You may qualify if your income and financial resources are low and you are 65 or older, or an adult or child with a disability or who is blind. Call 1-800-772-1213 or go to ssa.gov SSI to start to apply. Produced at U.S. taxpayer expense. Everybody can make something because I think everyone has a spark of creativity and the reason that I have to keep making is because I don't think my life would be as fulfilling without it. If you make things yourself, that means you're not cowering in fear. You're out there taking chances. That, I think, is my way of saying I love you to the world. All right, now I want to hear why you make. Share your own Why I Make story today. Visit whyimake.org. High-quality foods, friendly service, great prices, and a connection to the community that is unsurpassed. That's Jeans Heartland Foods in Eudora. Family-owned, Jeans Heartland Foods offers a convenient one-stop shop, delivering the everyday essentials you need to specialty items from around the world. Jeans Friendly staff is here to help you find exactly what you're looking for. You have options when it comes to feeding your family. Choose to support local. Choose Jeans Heartland Foods, 1402 Church Street in Eudora, or online at heartlandfoodstores.com. Just like the Cardinals are striving for success, Caw Valley State Bank's mission is your success. At Caw Valley State Bank, they provide the best, most efficient, courteous, and professional banking services possible. And at Caw Valley, they recognize that the customer and their satisfaction is the most important ingredient to growing their community. With all the services you've come to expect from the hometown partner you deserve, Caw Valley State Bank, online at kvsb.com. A proud supporter of Eudora Schools. For more than 20 years, Gherkin Rental has been the place to go to get the job done in eastern Kansas and western Missouri. With a huge selection of quality equipment, from roll-offs to trailers, telehandlers to generators, power washers to popcorn makers, experienced equipment professionals, and clean, well-maintained tools to help you get the job done right the first time. Gherkin Rental. Stop by any of their 13 locations across the KC Metro or call 855-GHERKINS. That's 855-437-5367. 
the smoothest, the creamiest, the most amazing ice cream you've ever had. That's what you'll find at Main Street Scoops and Sweets in historic downtown Eudora, Kansas. With over 100 mouthwatering Wisconsin-made ice cream flavors, including dairy-free and gluten-free options. The bakery is always serving up the most heavenly cookies, cakes, and so much more. Ask about Main Street's custom cakes for that special occasion. What are you waiting for? Come make the sweetest of memories at Main Street Scoops and Sweets in downtown Eudora, where it's always ice cream time. The MVPs of BBQ. That's Barbed Wire Barbecue in Eudora. Family owned and operated Barbed Wire Barbecue delivers great food and small town hospitality at a valued price. High quality hickory smoked meats, house seasonings, and time tested recipes put Barbed Wire Barbecue a cut above the rest. Kick off your weekend with their delicious brunch on Saturdays and Sundays and enjoy game day your way with Barbed Wire Game Day Packs. Visit them at 601 East 10th in Eudora or see their full lineup of flavors at barbedwirebarbecue.com. The Supplemental Security Income Program provides monthly payments to help meet basic needs, like putting food on the table, paying the rent, or buying new shoes for growing feet. You may qualify if your income and financial resources are low and you are 65 or older, or an adult or child with a disability or who is blind. Call 1-800-772-1213 or go to ssa.gov SSI to start to apply. Produced at U.S. taxpayer expense. Welcome back in. Welcome back in here to the broadcast. Sorry, welcome back in here to the broadcast booth. Dylan Vanderveen here with you, the play-by-play -play announcer here with Brewer. Great game here in that first game, three for four, a couple of doubles, a home run, opposite field home run. What did the ball just look like? Did it look like a beach ball to you where you're swinging the bat today? A little bit, just trying to stay with approach, opposite field with the lefty, trying to go away and just see the ball and just try to hit it. Were you on it? I I was shocked up here announcing in the broadcast booth that they let. Then they let that guy pitch you a third time. Were you honestly shocked when you walked up there, a couple of guys on? Were you shocked that they were letting you pitch you a third time? No, not really. They haven't really put in the change up yet, so I was hopefully waiting on that one. See it come in outside. And obviously you have more home runs. I mean, eight home runs this season already. What kind of approach are you having to be able to just hit with power and hit so consistently well with the best average on the team, best on base percentage, most home runs, having this outstanding season so far. How well are you, or how are you doing so well this season? How well are you just what's your approach every single day to go into the plate? Trying to just sim fly the game. Baseball is literally a lot of mental and just trying to just see the ball and hit it and just make it as simple as possible. It's striking the zone, just try to do damage. What are you guys going to try to do kind of in this uh, next game? Obviously, you guys are up 3-0 in this series, looking to sweep up look, looking to sweep up the Panthers. What are you guys going to do, and what are you going to do to make sure that happens? Sticking with our approach and just simplifying the game, like I said, and don't do too much. Just keep on getting hits like we've been and just stay within. Brewer, I appreciate you uh, coming out here and doing this post-game show with us. Didn't Thank take you. too much time, but uh, good luck and go do the exact same thing that you did in the first game. I'll try to. Thank That's you. It. The smoothest, the creamiest, the most amazing ice cream you've ever had. That's what you'll find at Main Street Scoops and Sweets in historic downtown Eudora, Kansas. With over 100 mouthwatering Wisconsin-made ice cream flavors, including dairy-free and gluten-free options. The bakery is always serving up the most heavenly cookies, cakes, and so much more. Ask about Main Street's custom cakes for that special occasion. What are you waiting for? Come make the sweetest of memories at Main Street Scoops and Sweets in downtown Eudora, where it's always ice cream time. Are you looking for a trusted partner in pet care? Look no further than Eudora Animal Hospital, proudly serving Eudora and the surrounding area since 1975. Eudora Animal Hospital offers a wide range of services, including wellness exams, surgeries, routine vaccinations, and emergency care. Hi guys, 
just wanted to say thank you from Eudora Animal Hospital for all your support and Go Dogs! Schedule an appointment by calling 785-542-3265 or visit eudoravet.com. Call insurance agent. Hello, customer. Oh, great. Uh, I just had a quick question about my insurance. You are 312th in line. Oh, it's just a real quick question. Would you like a callback in six hours? Sometimes humans are just more helpful. Hey, Max, I can answer your insurance question. Awesome. I appreciate it. Farm Bureau Financial Services. It's your future. Let's protect it. Contact Farm Bureau agent Anthony Brown in Eudora today at 785-615-0516. Dan, you need to go. Really? It's important. I feel fine. Look, you cannot mess around with this kind of stuff. Some cancers... That... Man, we just don't want to lose you from something we could have called. What do I need to do? You just give your doctor a call, and they'll tell you what screening test you need. Fine. Can I have my pie now? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> High quality foods, friendly service, great prices, and a connection to the community that is unsurpassed. That's Jeans Heartland Foods in Eudora. Family owned, Jeans Heartland Foods offers a convenient one stop shop, delivering the everyday essentials you need to specialty items from around the world. Jeans Friendly staff is here to help you find exactly what you're looking for. You have options when it comes to feeding your family. Choose to support local. Choose Jeans Heartland Foods, 1402 Church Street in Eudora, or online at heartlandfoodstores.com. At Kansas Insurance, we know one size doesn't fit all. In fact, our whole mindset is based on customized policies for you and your families. We're local, and we do what we do because we care about you. Think of us as brokers for your insurance needs. Working with Kansas Insurance gets you the award-winning service and attention to detail that only an independent agency can provide. All across Kansas, we're here to help you manage and plan for all types of risk. Contact a local agent today. Kansas Insurance. Local. Independent. Serving you. Hey folks, save a thousand bucks on your interior painting project this winter. Hire Absolute Painting during November through February and qualify for 10% off your project, a free paint upgrade, and a free color consultation to make sure you choose the perfect colors to transform your home. This amazing offer only lasts until our winter calendar is booked and spots are filling up fast. Call now and save a thousand bucks on your interior project. No money down affordable monthly payment options are available. This offer won't last long, so call now to save a thousand bucks on your interior project with Absolute Painting, where quality is absolute. I used to drive an ambulance as an EMT, and I've always tried to be a safe driver. If people knew what I know, lives could be saved. In my car, if I see a truck or bus taking a turn, I know to take my time. When big vehicles turn right, they may swing wide to make the turn. If you try to sneak in, well, it's a lesson you'd rather not learn the hard way. When trucks and buses turn, let's you and I wait. It's our roads, it's our safety. At Kansas Insurance, we know one size doesn't fit all. In fact, our whole mindset is based on customized policies for you and your families. We're local, and we do what we do because we care about you. Think of us as brokers for your insurance needs. Working with Kansas Insurance gets you the award-winning service and attention to detail that only an independent agency can provide. All across Kansas, we're here to help you manage and plan for all types of risk. Contact a local agent today. Kansas Insurance. Local. Independent. Serving you. Are you looking for a trusted partner in pet care? Look no further than Eudora Animal Hospital, proudly serving Eudora and the surrounding area since 1975. Eudora Animal Hospital offers a wide range of services, including wellness exams, surgeries, routine vaccinations, and emergency care. Hi guys, just wanted to say thank you from Eudora Animal Hospital for all your support and Go Dogs! Schedule an appointment by calling 785-542-3265 or visit eudoravet.com. 
Save the Children believes childhood without food is unimaginable. Yet around the world, children are suffering from the worst famine in our lifetime, coupled with conflict, poverty, climate change, and more. Join Save the Children and get fed up. Fed up with the lack of progress. Fed up with the injustice. Learn how you can get involved in the fight against childhood hunger at savethechildren.org slash get fed up. I'm fed up. We're fed up. We're fed up. The smoothest, the creamiest, the most amazing ice cream you've ever had. That's what you'll find at Main Street Scoops and Sweets in historic downtown Eudora, Kansas. With over 100 mouth-watering Wisconsin-made ice cream flavors, including dairy-free and gluten-free options. The bakery is always serving up the most heavenly cookies, cakes, and so much more. Ask about Main Street's custom cakes for that special occasion. What are you waiting for? Come make the sweetest of memories at Main Street Scoops and Sweets in downtown Eudora, where it's always ice cream time. Question, what will you find on all over-the-counter or OTC medicine packages to help you choose the right drug and use it safely? The answer, the drug facts label. This label lists the medicine's active ingredients and purpose, how much to take, and warnings you should know before using it. Remember, even OTC medicines you buy without a prescription can cause side effects you don't want. So follow the information listed on the drug facts label. For more information, visit FDA.gov slash drug facts label. A message from the U.S. Food and Drug Administration. At Kansas Insurance, we know one size doesn't fit all. In fact, our whole mindset is based on customized policies for you and your families. We're local, and we do what we do because we care about you. Think of us as brokers for your insurance needs. Working with Kansas Insurance gets you the award-winning service and attention to detail that only an independent agency can provide. All across Kansas, we're here to help you manage and plan for all types of risk. Contact a local agent today. Kansas Insurance. Local. Independent. Serving you. Just like the Cardinals are striving for success, Caw Valley State Bank's mission is your success. At Caw Valley State Bank, they provide the best, most efficient, courteous, and professional banking services possible. And at Caw Valley, they recognize that the customer and their satisfaction is the most important ingredient to growing their community. With all the services you've come to expect from the hometown partner you deserve, Caw Valley State Bank, online at kvsb.com. A proud supporter of Eudora Schools. Number one, obviously, is safety. We definitely call 811 to find out if there are any buried lines, fiber optic, whether it be telephone or pipeline or anything. Don't take a chance. Don't think you know and say, well, there's, I don't remember anything being put in there. Call 811 and make sure that that's identified that there isn't something there before you make that crossing. Because in the end, we want everybody going home. High quality foods, friendly service, great prices, and a connection to the community that is unsurpassed. That's Jeans Heartland Foods in Eudora. Family owned, Jeans Heartland Foods offers a convenient one-stop shop, delivering the everyday essentials you need to specialty items from around the world. Jeans friendly staff is here to help you find exactly what you're looking for. You have options when it comes to feeding your family. Choose to support local. Choose Jeans Heartland Foods, 1402 Church Street in Eudora, or online at heartlandfoodstores.com. Everybody can make something because I think everyone has a spark of creativity and the reason that I have to keep making is because I don't think my life would be as fulfilling without it. If you make things yourself, that means you're not cowering in fear. You're out there taking chances. That I think is my way of saying I love you to the world. All right, now I want to hear why you make. Share your own Why I Make story today. Visit whyimake.org. For more than 20 years, Gherkin Rental has been the place to go to get the job done in eastern Kansas and western Missouri. With a huge selection of quality equipment, from roll-offs to trailers, telehandlers to generators, power washers to popcorn makers, experienced equipment professionals, and clean, well-maintained tools to help you get the job done right the first time. Gherkin Rental. Stop by any of their 13 locations across the KC Metro or call 855-GHERKINS. That's 855-437-5367.
For more than 20 years, Gherkin Rental has been the place to go to get the job done in eastern Kansas and western Missouri. With a huge selection of quality equipment, from roll-offs to trailers, telehandlers to generators, power washers to popcorn makers, experienced equipment professionals, and clean, well-maintained tools to help you get the job done right. The first time, Gherkin Rental. Stop by any of their 13 locations across the KC Metro or call 855-GHERKINS. That's 855-437-5367. Prescription drug pricing points to corporate mountain. Freedom of the press is about your right to know. It's about your right to be informed. Today, no. there are real threats to press freedom. And your right to know about the world around us. We must protect our right to know, no matter what kind of news is important That's to you. Before it's too late, understand the threats. Protectpressfreedom.org. I used to drive an ambulance as an EMT, and I've always tried to be a safe driver. If people knew what I know, lives could be saved. In my car, if I see a truck or bus taking a turn, I know to take my time. When big vehicles turn right, they may swing wide to make the turn. If you try to sneak in, well, it's a lesson you'd rather not learn the hard way. When trucks and buses turn, let's you and I wait. It's our roads, it's our safety. For more than 20 years, Gherkin Rental has been the place to go to get the job done in eastern Kansas and western Missouri. With a huge selection of quality equipment, from roll-offs to trailers, telehandlers to generators, power washers to popcorn makers, experienced equipment professionals, and clean, well-maintained tools to help you get the job done right. The first time, Gherkin Rental. Stop by any of their 13 locations across the KC Metro or call 855-GHERKINS. That's 855-437-5367. Welcome back here into Johnson County. Second game of the two-game doubleheader here for the Cavaliers. Won the first one 8-2. to two. In front of pitchers John Chambers as well as Maddox, Maddox Burkett leading us to that win 8-2. to two. Brewer and Hepburn both home runs. Now getting started here in game number two for Johnson County. You want to run me over just a little bit about the pitching matchup here, Reed? Well, definitely can get you some stuff on Josiah Golden for the time being, as, of course, we uh, we called him Goldie before on a previous broadcast. It's listed as his official nickname. I didn't just make it up. Um, he had a pretty solid start in that game. So I'm digressing here while I get to his stats. Coming out of Higginsville, Missouri, on the season four appearances, four starts, 3-0 and record, 16 innings pitch, 225 ERA, a whip under one, and 20 strikeouts. So he is having a spectacular season so far here in his freshman season with the Cavaliers. Absolutely killing it. So excited to see another Goldie outing here today. 
He's going to walk the first batter of the day. It's going to be a four or five pitch walk. Only the fifth walk he's given up all season. It's going to bring up number five in Westerman. Westerman had a struggling outing last time. Here, last game, 0 for 3. Three Ks and a walk. I want to hit towards third. It's going to be a double play territory. Five, four, three. Oh, dropped it's by dropped Rowe. by Rowe. Oh. They do get the guy at second. Couldn't necessarily get the pick play for Rowe, but third, we'll have first one first out. Yeah. Brewer at first base last time. Rowe comes in this time. Brewer in the DH position. I don't want to hit in the left center. It's absolutely ripped. This one could be extra bases. It will be. And coming around third, going to hold them there. Westerman cannot get in to score, but it is a one-out double that will put second and third for Nea Show here early on. They're uh, getting a hold of Goldie's pitches here very early on. So they'll definitely have to hope to settle into this one. Did take a little bit for Chambers to settle in last game as he gave up one in the first inning. A little bit struggling in the first couple of innings, but after that really settled in nicely and Burkett came in and slammed the door. Hopefully goalie can settle in here and get a couple of outs and get out of this inning unfazed. Well, it's going to be strike one. Umpires obviously change from home plate to the field. So it could be a little bit different zone. Last time we had one that was a little bit more on towards the outside of the plate. Which it was consistent there. So it wasn't, that's not a complaint. It's just a fact. It's just where it was. You know, as a, as a referee, I'm not, I've never been a baseball umpire, but I've refereed soccer, especially. I just know that consistency is the key. You, you, you want your players to know what to expect from you. Even if it's not, you know, the, their favorite call, as long as I know what to and not to do, then we're, we'll be good which he was, the, the home, home ump had a very consistent day. I have umpired before, and it's not an easy job to do back there. One and two with one out. Runners right now are Westerson and, or Westerman at third base, excuse me, and after that is Coaster at second. Pepper had to get in front of that one. So here, 2-2. Two, two. Ready to deliver. That one hit in the right field, popped up high. Ready to tag is Westerman. Will tagging and trying to score is him, and he will easily. So the first run of the game goes to the Panthers again, an early one nothing lead. That's both games that they have started out with a two-out run in the first inning. Those two-out runs can really make or break games. In the end, they ended up being non-consequential in the previous game, but in, in games that end up being close, as this matchup was for a long time, uh, Th those could be absolute game changers. They're ready to go is more. I'll speed in there for strike one. Deal one pitch here, ready. I want to hit right back to him, up the middle. Nice backhanded play, and we'll retire the side there. Nice job by Mosh, not letting that get any farther. And one run here scored for the Panthers. Johnson County looking to get it back here when we come back.
question. What will you find on all over-the-counter or OTC medicine packages to help you choose the right drug and use it safely? The answer, the drug facts label. This label lists the medicine's active ingredients and purpose, how much to take, and warnings you should know before using it. Remember, even OTC medicines you buy without a prescription can cause side effects you don't want. So follow the information listed on the drug facts label. For more information, visit fda.gov slash drug facts label. A message from the U.S. Food and Drug Administration. At Kansas Insurance, we know one size doesn't fit all. In fact, our whole mindset is based on customized policies for you and your families. We're local, and we do what we do because we care about you. Think of us as brokers for your insurance needs. Working with Kansas Insurance gets you the award-winning service and attention to detail that only an independent agency can provide. All across Kansas, we're here to help you manage and plan for all types of risk. Contact a local agent today. Kansas Insurance. Local. Independent. Serving you. State coordinates of new land acquisition. Oh, well, you know that big oak tree that got struck by lightning? Negative. The barn with the funny cow mural? Negative. One-eyed scarecrow? Negative. Giant water tower? You're not from here, are you? I've never seen him. Robots don't know you. We do. Hey, how's your dad doing? For over 80 years, we've built relationships first and plans second. It's your future. Let's protect it. Contact Farm Bureau agent Anthony Brown in Eudora today at 785-615-0516. Hey, welcome back to Johnson County. Leading off again is going to be McClure. Had a little bit of a tough day in the first game. Was hit twice. Tough day, not because uh, of anything he did. Beyond tough day, day to get there. there. And, tough day to sit in there and get hit twice. That was a grounded out into a double play. Grounded out to the shortstop twice. And oh my goodness, he got hit again. Right in the foot this time. So the third hit by pitch. Of the day for McClure, an absolute ball magnet today. At what point does it start to become questionable? If it's intentional, it's not. But what? <laughs> but at what point? I mean, you know, if, if after they hit him five times, do you think maybe, uh, maybe it was on purpose? I'm saying this: I get hit five times in one day. I'm charging the mound. I don't care if it's intentional or not. Yeah, so. credit, credit to him; he's taking it well. But man, yeah, that can't feel great. Solid lead off then. Nice bunt down the third base line. Somehow Just runs up foul. foul. It looked like it had plenty of room, but the spin took it towards the third base line and ends up in foul territory. Again, the Cavs really want to bunt, which is really interesting. They've only had one solid bunt come off. It was Riker Edwards, and he got thrown out. Um, but they, they've tried that a lot here so far. Fleck does have nine stolen bases out of ten attempts, so he does have some speed to go down the sideline. This time he'll just look to take a hack. He will take it inside for the first ball. Join us. The Panthers scored the first run of the game off the one hit and then a sack fly by Fry was how they scored their run. McClure looked like he got a good jump there and more making sure that he isn't going anywhere. Could be a back pick coming. Did have one in the first inning last game. On McClure. And so he said, you don't think I can do it again? That one yeah. inside fouled off to the left side. I thought that might have gotten over the net, but it did not. Ever since I said that in that game, there's only been like two that I think have gone over. And oh yeah, I mean these nets season. are these nets are very sufficiently tall, especially since we mentioned the parking isn't too close. Here are the two two. On in there wow. for strike three and a big umpire strike three call made it loud and clear. Fleck today 
in the first game did have three hits and a walk was three for three this time backwards k the first of the day for hayden on the side of yosho Looking at Cooper Hayden's stats, comes in with a near 7 ERA, 6.89, through 15 and two-thirds innings of work. He's let up 12 earned runs, 15 hits, 11 strikeouts, 3 walks, 2 homers, and 4 hit by pitches, which is now 5. That one just ends up a little bit low. Count is 20. Saw good at bats throughout the entire day by everybody for Johnson County in the first game. Right now, Mosh and then Brewer after that. We talked to Brewer a little bit on the post game. All about simplicity for him. Really just hammered the message of I'm keeping it simple, doing my own approach, and really just doing my own thing, and it's kind of working. Yeah, and it's interesting. I was noticing. You know, uh, so many of his teammates at this point are starting to commit to what they're going to do next for, for, for their next season of baseball. He is still uncommitted, and I think that that's a matter of he's ready to perform this season and earn a really good opportunity going forward. Um, so it's interesting to see what that will look like as Fleck took off there. But Excuse me, McClure. The hit and run was on there here for Moss, Mosh and McClure. Ends up fouling it straight back. Back to a full count here. He's going to be running again. With the one out, he doesn't have to, but you might, you're might. you probably right. That he'll... I think he's going to run again, though. You are indeed correct. And that one, oh, just lands foul. Ooh, that Less than a him. foot away from the baseline. Easily would have scored McClure down there. It would have been serious trouble for Naosha. Oh. They get away with that one. Back to a full count again. Seventh pitch of the at bat coming. Here's delivery by Hayden. That one will end up as a pop up, and McClure is going to have to sprint back if he can get there. And he will. So, a nice play that time. And. Coaster will make that one, but popped up in the air. One thing you can't really do if a guy is running is pop it up. Now here comes Dagan Brewer. We could call him player of the game last game, yeah. Absolutely. Him and Hepburn. Hepburn having that three-run shot as well. But having three extra base hits will get you that player of the game. Or that one gets away from more, more of a wild pitch. I'd say a passed ball, but mark it as what you wish. But McClure ends up on second. So now man in scoring position here for Brewer. Just how he likes him had four RBIs in the first game. Two run shot in the first last time with his first AB. Hayden's got his selection from his catcher. Here's the delivery. That one ends up low on off speed. Ends up two and one after the spit by Brewer. So when you asked him if he was shocked, when we asked him if he was shocked that he had a third at bat against their first pitcher last time, he said, no, I hadn't seen, you know, his third pitch, but I mean, he hit it all, all three times. We dominated. That other side, and this time towards the first baseman, will get the short hop and retire the side. That was a weird one. We know that Dagan loves to try to pull the ball, and that one, it hit sort of off the top of the barrel there and went completely against where he wanted it to. 
ends up being a, a sort of weird ground out to the first baseman. Jam shot grounder retires at one nothing Panthers after one. At Kansas Insurance, we know one size doesn't fit all. In fact, our whole mindset is based on customized policies for you and your families. We're local, and we do what we do because we care about you. Think of us as brokers for your insurance needs. Working with Kansas Insurance gets you the award-winning service and attention to detail that only an independent agency can provide. All across Kansas, we're here to help you manage and plan for all types of risk. Contact a local agent today. Kansas Insurance. Local. Independent. Serving you. Call insurance agent. Hello, customer. Oh, great. Uh, I just had a quick question about my insurance. You are 312th in line. Oh, it's just a real quick question. Would you like a callback in six hours? Sometimes humans are just more helpful. Hey, Max, I can answer your insurance question. Awesome. I appreciate it. Farm Bureau Financial Services. It's your future. Let's protect it. Contact Farm Bureau agent Anthony Brown in Eudora today at 785-615-0516. Welcome back in here to the broadcast booth. A one nothing first inning. They show won the first inning. Now back to work trying to get a clean inning is Goldie. The first pitch is an off speed right in there. Yeah, it was an interesting how that first inning went for him. Certainly not uh, ideal. Only giving up one run in the end, but having to face five batters. That one ends up in slices into the bullpen for the Cavs. Definitely like for this to be a little bit more of a calm second inning for Goldie. Got a good start here to it right now. 0-2 in a hole, ready to set for the third delivery of the inning. That one there you go. and a miss. Soft speed caught him hanging. Threw him the chair. And one out here for the Cavaliers. That looked a lot better here to start off the inning for Golden than the walk that he had to Rodriguez. Yeah, a big swing and a miss strikeout will always be good for confidence. Knowing that they tried to hit it and, and couldn't, and then following it up with a pitch that Hanneberg tried to dodge, and then it ended up in pretty much middle-middle in the strike zone. Fooling some people with his off speed. Got one on a slide earlier. So uh, the 1-1 one, one with a one out. And that one's in there for strike two right on the outside. So blown right past him. Wasn't even ready was Hainberg. And now a 1-2 count. Look for the second strikeout of the day. Is the pitch and another off speed strikeout back to back K's. And now starting to get into it is Golden. Definitely like to see that. His 21st and 22nd strikeouts of the season. Golden might be figuring it out here. I went blown right by him again. 88 miles an hour. Looked like the guy was respecting about 83. I thought he looked like he was way out in front. Was he? You think he was behind that? I think he was behind that. I think he was behind that a ton. It looked to me. I thought, I thought he had pulled the trigger well before he ever needed to. And that's a foul ball. So the O two with two outs.
Lugan is close out this inning. Could be striking out the side if he gets this pitch delivered correctly. Here is the 0-2. There, that one popped up, so no triple K's, but a pop-up to third base will do it just as well. Black makes the play, a one, two, three, top of the second, and we will get you back for more Cavaliers baseball after the break. Everybody can make some... Hey folks, save a thousand bucks on your interior painting project this winter. Hire Absolute Painting during November through February and qualify for 10% off your project, a free paint upgrade, and a free color consultation to make sure you choose the perfect colors to transform your home. This amazing offer only lasts until our winter calendar is booked and spots are filling up fast. Call now and save a thousand bucks on your interior project. No money down affordable monthly payment options are available. This offer won't last long, so call now to save a thousand bucks on your interior project with Absolute Painting, where quality is absolute. What would happen if, if I had to pick up the phone, call 911 for one of my family members or one of my neighbors? What would I do if, if no one was on the other end to respond? What if there was no 911? So you can be a part of the solution. Anybody can be a firefighter, male, female, younger, older. We are school teachers. We are leaders in business. Is me, you, anyone that wants to be. There is no typical firefighter. State coordinates of new land acquisition. Oh, well, you know that big oak tree that got struck by lightning? Negative. The barn with the funny cow mural? Negative. Here, welcome back in Johnson County. Dylan Vanderveen here. And Reed McAvoy here with you. Hepburn sets. And we'll take strike one in there. Last time you saw Hepburn up to bat, it was a three-run monster shot in the left center that put them up 7-2. to two. After that, it was Mike and Miller was taking his last A-B from him, switched out in the D-H spot. I mentioned there's a good, good number of commits on this team. Hepburn is among them. So he is committed to Southern Illinois Edwardsville to play baseball at the next, next season. Two and one is the count right now. Going by, and we'll even it out at twos. That burn really another star or another really solid player on this team that well, they have tons of catchers. Mike and Miller one. Kilgore, another Hepburn, amongst those three. I want to hit towards the left side. Nice job to glove it. Gets a strong throw all the way across wow. the diamond. Nice play. Opposite side. That was Westerman at third yeah. base making a nice glove and a strong throw. Yeah. I mean, that was from foul territory beyond the third base bag. That was impressive there by Westerman. Played third base in my time when I played baseball for all those years. Love to see a great third base play. How'd you like the hot corner? I love the hot corner. You know, I, I, I played second. I played short. Didn't have the strong enough arm necessarily for shortstop, but I liked second base. Um, but, you know, I feel like sometimes, you know, you had all day – throw from second base and everything like that. I, I kind of liked how fast it came sometime at third base. And, you know, you get to slow down your momentum a little bit, make it make a strong throw to third base rather than just seeming like it takes forever to get the ground ball at second. I want to hit towards left field. It will land and will bounce off the wall. Extra bases this time for Mike and Miller. And it will be a stand-up one-out double for Mr. Miller, his first hit of the day, only had one at bat in the first game, and it was a fly out to center. Yeah, no, there's, uh, I think there's absolutely something to not having as much time to think. I think a lot of times people will overthink things, 
Um, and that if you're rushed into it and forced to make a quick decision that act, uh, oftentimes, not always, but a lot of times it can actually go better for you if you don't give yourself time to overthink and miscalculate. I think we actually did see a bit of that to relate it to our game last game when uh, when Chambers picked up the pace. I think that he was maybe trying to get out of his own head and just move a little bit quicker, and that really did help him clean up the end of his day. So, no, there's there's definitely something to not having as much time to think and having to act quickly. Yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't much of a guy where, you know, if there was a hot shot, I didn't take too much time to throw it over to third base. But tagging here and making a nice base move is Mike and Miller. So doing a job is Jordan Black getting the guy over. But, yes, you know, if you get a hot shot right to third, you know, you can have all the time in the world if the guy – Sprinted down 90 feet, but I was more of a guy who was, yep, get the ball, yep, take a shuffle, get rid of it, get it going, throw it around the horn. Two outs now, still a main on third, left a guy on last time as well, not looking to do the same thing here with Rowe up to plate. Rowe so far this season, 45 AB's 244 average, but in 400 on base percentage. That one hit towards third base, and that one. Oh, wow. An error. Rodriguez is going to be charged with that one. Has to just go right off his glove. It will score Miller in a costly one with two outs for Rodriguez. So was... nothing past this. So if any more runs score on the side versus Hayden, none of them count two outs. And there has been an error. That was a pretty bad mistake there from Rodriguez. I really don't. Uh, I'm not sure what went wrong there, but that was pretty much hit straight straight to him, and it was a would have been a straightforward out to get out of the inning with the lead. But now he's got an error mark next to his name, and the game is tied. Straight ones up on the board right now. You got one in the run categories, one's in the hits category, and one air for the side of the Panthers. Now two strikes here to Tisdale. 0 for 3 in the last games. One strikeout. Fly ball to center as well as a ground ball to third. Ready for the 0-2, and we'll land just a little bit low. Close in there. We're too close to watch if you're on an 0-2 count. Guess not for Tisdale. Ice in his veins on that one. Let's see if it works out here for him. The 1-2 swing and a missed cut. And more throwing that one away. So one run is scored here for Johnson County. They catch it up, even up at ones apiece going into the third. Save the Children believes childhood without food is unimaginable. Yet around the world, children are suffering from the worst famine in our lifetime, coupled with conflict, poverty, climate change, and more. Join Save the Children and get fed up. Fed up with the lack of progress. Fed up with the injustice. Learn how you can get involved in the fight against childhood hunger at savethechildren.org slash get fed up. I'm fed up. We're, We're fed, fed up. up. We're fed up. The Supplemental Security Income Program provides monthly payments to help meet basic needs, like putting food on the table, paying the rent, or buying new shoes for growing feet. You may qualify if your income and financial resources are low and you are 65 or older, or an adult or child with a disability or who is blind. Call 1-800-772-1213 or go to ssa.gov SSI to start to apply. Produced at U.S. taxpayer expense. 
At Kansas Insurance, we know one size doesn't fit all. In fact, our whole mindset is based on customized policies for you and your families. We're local, and we do what we do because we care about you. Think of us as brokers for your insurance needs. Working with Kansas Insurance gets you the award-winning service and attention to detail that only an independent agency can provide. All across Kansas, we're here to help you manage and plan for all types of risk. Contact a local agent today. Kansas Insurance. Local. Independent. Serving Welcome back in here to Johnson County. That one right away, slow motion, and it is going to be Beck getting on on an infield single. It was going to stop trying to make the play was Goldie himself. Him and Black ended up in no man's land. So, yeah, that was that was a tough one in a in a weird spot. Um, in the end, because of how perfect that that hit dropped down. I actually kind of would have liked to see Goldie just watch and see if it ran foul, but I don't think it was going to, but that was really always going to be his best bet because you saw on that throw, the runner was well, like multiple steps beyond first by the time that got to row because it was just such a such a long throw, such a perfectly placed um, short hit. They did say that he offered towards it, and he did, so Rodriguez charged with a strike. There you have the he have the bunt on. Randy Shack, did they try to do it a second time? He does square away as he throws over. Yeah, I mean, try to check the runner. You know, I've I've talked about the Johnson County seemingly testing the wanting to test the Panthers defense by bunting, but it really hasn't paid off yet. And we haven't seen many mistakes, but we did just see the error from Rodriguez in the previous half inning, um, and. Ooh, just ran foul. Um, but it's interesting to think of them bunting to test the infield of Johnson County. I mean, of course, Golden would be your best bet if you're Naosho in terms of getting to somebody who might not be able to throw you out as comfortably. But everybody else on this infield has proven their worth as a defensive player. So I'm not so sure about the idea of intentionally putting it in the infielder's hands. Here in 0-2, no outs, man at first is Beck. Beck looks like he wants to go, but no. He was stationary there for a while. This will be the 30th pitch for Josiah Golden. Matching his jersey number. Beck is three for three on steals so far this season. If he decided to go looking for a back pick and having to slide was Beck, but no throw from the catcher. Near the one, two. One foul tip and wasn't cut, so is a foul ball. Stays at one two. Back getting the signs from his coach, looking like it could be a steal situation here. And he will check him once. Beck does look like he might be ready to steal, possibly. It is a 1-2 situation right now with no outs. Yeah, so close with no outs. And Hepburn behind the plate for the first time today. Just maybe sort of a, a, a how you doing, prove, prove to me what you got. That one ends up just a little bit low trying to frame it was Hepburn. Did a nice job, but no dice on the strike call. If they do end up sending back, I imagine it'd be the type of thing where it's like, you know, if he uh, if he nails me, we probably won't steal again today. And if it's close, uh, then it's like, all right, you know, we're we're, we're going to test you here today because I I don't remember them testing Kilgore. That one was an off speed and was not expecting it. Way in front of it was Rodriguez and a strikeout number three of the day for. Goldie missed the one again in his Tamber, counted two for a second. 
So Al Westerman grounded into a fielder's choice last time. Yeah, one of those foul tip into the glove. Westerman so far this season is hitting 431. Haven't struggled today. Mentioned a couple of times you have three strikeouts in the first game. Now, DB, would they be more likely to send Beck with one out as it is here or with two if that were to come to pass? The way my coach always kind of explained it to me is the best the best time to ever get an out on the base path is with one because you don't want to have the first out be on the base pass and you don't want to close out an inning on the base pass. Okay. So the best chance is to go or with one out and at least the most risk, I should say. Sure. With one out. Yeah, and it would also, you know, the, currently the double plays in order, not that that's been happening very often, um, but, you know, even if he gets thrown out, it wouldn't be the worst necessarily, but I don't, doesn't seem, seem like they're not going to send him. 3-1 count could be the time to do it, but... Not a heavily stealing team. Only 11 stolen, or only 8 stolen bases on the entire year out of 9 attempts. So I guess Beck's just standing there menacingly. And potential so double play. Over to there, and no play on the throw. So just one out, and we'll be two outs still. We've only ever, I've only ever called one... Double play for John Z County so far. Almost had the second one with Rowe. Couldn't secure the pick, but. Coaster up now here had a sack fly. Or excuse me, no, that was Fry who had a coaster, had the double. That one spins in there at 78 miles an hour. For strike one, spits on the off speed. The one delivery. And there, a big swing and a miss again. That one coming in there at 79. Again, an off speed. He was looking for another extra base hit on that one. He's the only one to get a hit in the outfield. The only other hit registered to the Panthers was Beck's infield single. All of a sudden, Golden's a little afraid of the zone. Could be partially due to pitching out of the stretch with the runner on. Taking his time, making sure to check on Westerman. That one thrown in there for um, strike three. Coaster knew it. Everybody knew it. The umpire made sure and still a one-to-one -one score. One base runner at the beginning ends up in nothing. We'll bring you back here for the bottom half of the third. Johnson County Sports Live. Call insurance agent. Hello, customer. Oh, great. Uh, I just had a quick question about my insurance. You are 312th in line. Oh, it's just a real quick question. Would you like a callback in six hours? Sometimes humans are just more helpful. Hey, Max, I can answer your insurance question. Awesome. Appreciate it. Farm Bureau Financial Services. It's your future. Let's protect it. Contact Farm Bureau agent Anthony Brown in Eudora today at 785-615-0516. Everybody can make something because I think everyone has a spark of creativity and the reason that I have to keep making is because I don't think my life would be as fulfilling without it. If you make things yourself, that means you're not cowering in fear. You're out there taking chances. That, I think, is my way of saying I love you to the world. All right, now I want to hear why you make. Share your own Why I Make story today. Visit whyimake.org. Paper with tape. 
Hey, welcome back in here. Johnson County Sports Live, Dylan Vanity and Reed McElroy. One to one count, or not one to ground count, excuse me, one to one game. Zero zero on the count, two to one in hits, so not much exciting action as that one is poked through as soon as I said it. The second hit of the game here for the Cavaliers comes from McClure, and he did not wait for it. He says, I'm gonna hit you hit me twice on my first pitch. You know what? I'm not I'm not I'm not waiting for you to throw me a second one. It might it might hit me right in the back. I'll give you a hit of my own, he said. So now one for one here from McClure. Got something cooking. The first guy on. Fleck batted bat quite a bit from the right side in the last game when facing Clemenson. But now is from the left hand side. Now when another base hit poked through, that one between Man, what a skill to have to have a switch hit like that. Base number thirty seven, Jad Mon. I know I bring it up a good bit, but it's just it's it's a very unique thing to see. So early on in somebody's career and it's also a dying art it really is the this the switch hitter is going out of the game almost completely uh so just seeing somebody keeping that art alive honestly is pretty cool oh one there's a bunt nicely placed down can he get safe oh is he safe he's there what's the call i didn't see I believe they called him safe. They did. So a beautiful bunt by Mosh will load the bases for a guess who, Mr. Reed Dagan Brewer. Our player of the game that we got to talk to before. Maybe he could uh, earn himself another conversation with us if he had make something big happen here. That was finally the first time, or I guess the second time, because Riker did have a good bunt earlier, that they really managed to test the defense with the bunt um with the bunt attempt which they've been doing all day and you know what credit to uh credit to Westerman it was a good throw he he fielded it cleanly got the throw on but really quick there quick down the line by Mosh and these bases are loaded ducks on the pond for the caps we got to come up with some uh cavalier specific phrase for bases loaded We'll, we'll, we'll workshop that. Here a 1-1 one, one to Brewer. Delivery and that one smacked a ton and will go probably on the soccer field. <laughs> Heads up over at the softball diamond. It'll bring up the one and two now to Brewer. Big moment here for a big time player, Dagan Brewer. The delivery on the one, two. That one Rip. hit towards, and McClure nearly hit on that side again. He he almost hit a, I believe it was Fleck who was on the base one time, and he almost drilled him right in the head in foul territory. The last thing McClure needs is to be hit by his own teammate as well. Some friendly fire. The one, two. That one spun up and never came back down. Puts the count back at evens. But yeah, wouldn't that be something if McClure <laughs> just gets gets a shot right into his ankle, right, right in foul territory, gets hit on the base pass, too? That was interesting, that, that breaking ball pitch from Hayden. Trying to see if he could get Brewer to chase. He, was, he sat back on it, was very calm, but it was not a bad-looking pitch. Ooh. And woo, woo, I thought that he got him there because that looked like the same style of uh, just a little bit of late break. I thought it might have caught the back of the zone. I think I Brewer thought, yeah, thought, thought the same. I thought Brewer. I He's think prepared Brewer to head to the dugout. Down. I'm I'm pretty sure Brewer was thinking he was sold. So now everything's full. Bases loaded. Full count, and it'll be a walk. So Cavs take the lead. A two to one. McClure will score. And it's going to bring up Hepburn here again with the bases juiced. It's a fifth RBI on the series for Brewer. On the on the day, excuse me. So now Hayden, who's at, at 44 pitches, you know, he was, he was doing a good job of limiting damage. Now in the 
Bottom of the third. Already one in, and the base is loaded with no one out. Definitely not ideal for Neosho. Wrong guy to have at the plate, too, if you're Neosho and Hepburn. Ready hit one home run. That one in there just a little bit low, but caught the corner, so evens it up at ones apiece. You know, it's a tough spot. You know, here, you know, you'd love a double play, right, to get the two outs, but even that would still give up a run, which would seem to be a crucial run in a game that's so close. Uh, you know, because we said there was the one that was decided by a run yesterday. Um, and without Hepburn's big shot in the previous game, it would have been a one-run game, or a two-run game in the end. So every run here is so big. This is a really tough spot for the Panthers. They would love a strikeout. Here's Hepper and that one hit right back to himself. Yeah, off, so. his own, off his own jersey number on the back. Keeps it one and two. Going to see a fifth pitch of the at-bat. Excuse me, a sixth pitch of the at-bat. Trying to settle, settle in here. One-two delivery here by Hayden. That one is going to... Love to see the, the good eye. Sometimes the, the base is low to get people jumpy, which is understandable. But Hepburn stayed in his skin there. Watch that one miss on the outside. Count back to evens at two apiece. Two to one game. That one nice stop by Moore. Not let that one pass them. And here we are again. Loaded to the brim. Bases and the count are full. 3-2 here. Hepburn ready. Hayden's got his selection and is ready to deliver. That one big swing and a miss. Hayden wins the battle. Hepburn will take a seat in a monster strikeout if you're a Panthers fan. Hayden really needed that one out on the mound. He just surpassed 50 pitches. And uh, now that makes it so that a potential double play could get him out of here with only letting up one run, which would be really impressive if he could make that happen. And they would still, if they could still get away with giving up one further run, I think they would still be happy. But that strikeout is a big step towards getting out of here without too much damage done. Mike and Miller here. Doubled last time. That one nearly caught him. That would have been costly. Hayden knew as well on the mound. He was almost like a sigh of relief type of thing that he didn't get as part of his jersey. Thanks for getting out of the way of that one. Another Ooh. bat pick try. Oh, he went ahead. Wow. He's going to send him home. Oh, and my goodness. The third. A huge mistake by the third baseman, Westerman, to not secure that with his glove. That not only ruined a possible back pick, but it also scored a run. That is extremely costly. I think that. Uh... I think Moore made that pick. I think that ball was there in time, and Fleck was left out to dry. But instead, got past the third baseman. Fleck gets to come home and score, and Mosh advances to third, and now the bases will be loaded once again. Yeah, if you're a third baseman, you cannot let a ball past you on a throwdown. Or, I mean, unless it's an insanely wild throw, you can. If you if you're if you're able to get a glove on it, you gotta you gotta be able. I mean, you're putting your entire body in front of that to stop that baseball. That is. That will bring out Woo. head coach here for a show. And the base is loaded after that walk to Mike and Miller. It's going to be a tough one here and discussing around. Jordan Black going to be up. And, you know, I think uh, I think we're seeing why the Cavaliers have uh, been trying to test uh, the test the waters on the quality of the infielders for Neosho because we now have two infield errors here in this game. One by the second baseman, Rodriguez. One by the third baseman, Westerman, that resulted in a run being scored. So 
Uh, we we can see why what it, what Coach Horner was honing in on and trying to attack. So after the mound visit, going over Hayden, and Livers in for a strike one on an off speed. Could the inning get even bigger? And I got to point out for Black, I'll try to get a good shot for you on it. He is way crowding the plate. Actually, he's taking a bit of a step back on this one. That first pitch, he was standing on that right white line. Um, I think he might be leaning in for the hit by pitch, but never mind that idea. Going to hit towards opposite field is going to be a tag up all the way at the warning track. Running back is Miller. No dice getting him to second. However, it will score one in Mosh. As well as getting over Brewer to third base. So now first and third with two outs in a four to one game with three runs scored in the inning. Yeah, that's uh honestly that's what you would expect from the Cavaliers, but definitely is a heartbreaker for the Panthers because that first strikeout on Hepburn was a really big step towards getting out of it without uh, without allowing too much damage. But now at this point. It is a uh, it's a rough spot that the Panthers find themselves in. Still way early, lots of time to remedy it, but they would have definitely been hoping for better. It's a four to one game now. Still four to two in hits. Brewer did walk. He's on third base right now, and that is going to be a dead ball hit by pitch on row. So. Center fielder number 14, Jeff Tisdale. So again, third different time that the Cavaliers have loaded the bases. This time it's to Tisdale. Still with the bases juiced, he will take strike one on the outside corner. Sills had some opportunities today. Hasn't capitalized very much. Show for four so far, a couple of Ks. I want to hit towards the third base side and now in a hole at 0 2. If Tisdell manages to reach. The Cavaliers would bat around, as it is McClure in the on-deck circle, who began this inning. So the ninth batter of the inning. Bases are still juiced 0-2 incoming from Hayden. That one's high and outside. He'll see a fourth pitch. He had a waste pitch there, so he was looking for a chase from Tisdale. Did not get it, but not a bad pitch at all. He'll take that for ball one. One, two. This one could be trouble, could be landing. Going to get there, though, in right field. Didn't slice nearly enough to that one to get down. And he'll retire the side, but not before damage is done. Three runs scored in the bottom of the third. Cavaliers 4-1 lead. Johnson County Sports Live. <laughs> At Kansas Insurance, we know one size doesn't fit all. In fact, our whole mindset is based on customized policies for you and your families. We're local, and we do what we do because we care about you. Think of us as brokers for your insurance needs. Working with Kansas Insurance gets you the award-winning service and attention to detail that only an independent agency can provide. All across Kansas, we're here to help you manage and plan for all types of risk. Contact a local agent today. Kansas Insurance. Local. Independent. Serving you. For more than 20 years, Gherkin Rental has been the place to go to get the job done in eastern Kansas and western Missouri with a huge selection of quality equipment from roll-offs to trailers, telehandlers to generators, power washers to popcorn makers. Experienced equipment professionals and clean, well-maintained tools to help you get the job done right the first time. Gherkin Rental. Stop by any of their 13 locations across the KC Metro or call 855-GHERKINS. That's 855-437-5367.
Welcome to your Johnson County Sports Live. I'll, I'll take this one intro for you, Dylan. Reed McAvoy, Dylan Vanderveen here with you. Top four Cavs coming off a solid inning where they put up three runs. It's going to continue. Golden will continue his night, or I suppose afternoon, against Fry. He's 0 for 0 on the game because he hit a sack fly. Take it away, DB. Sorry, I stole your job there. Oh, you're all good, man. That's why both of us are here. So Fry had a quiet day so far, as you mentioned, 0 for 0 with that sack fly. There's a clock violation. That's something I have not yet seen. And so that's a clock violation. So one ball's been put on it already. So before a pitch is thrown, one ball. And now a 2-0 count. I want to hit into left field, and it's going to be gone. A shot that time. It was number 19. And wow. That one, you could tell automatically that one was going to be gone right off the bat. Can you call it a, can you call it a big fry? Sorry, but for fry going there, going long. Do you think that uh that pitch clock violation could have gotten in Goldie's head at all, or do you think that's inconsequential to the home run he gave up? I mean, when you do look at Brendan Fry, it was only so much time that you're going to shut him down. Him batting, I mean, with a OPS of sixteen hundred. I mean, Ooh. having now ten home runs on the season. But yeah, okay, so yeah, it probably wasn't I mean, the catchers anymore. No, no, the, no, the, the I, I would I would say more than violation. likely, yeah, no, it had very little to. Little amount to do with it, yeah. That was just Fry being Fry. So that does make it a little more interesting, definitely. Um, it, it is a is a nicer to look at from the Panthers' side of things, being down by three. It feels like a lot more work than down by two. You just got to get, you know, a bloop and a blast, as they say. Uh, so that's a that's a big swing there by Fry. But for on, on Golden side of things, you know, solo shots you'll take those all day long especially when you're when you've got a multi-run lead as he gets a swinging strike out there um you know the solo shots those, those are the ideal ones you know as long as you're not doing it with the bases loaded you'll let him score one run at a time um so hopefully goldie doesn't let that get to him too much uh, the the one run on the board it doesn't really it, you know that could have easily been um you know a double and then another double instead it was a homer you know, reset, basically the inning just began again, and then he goes and gets a strikeout. So I, I don't think he's too worried about it, which is good. Matchup, now they're swinging and a miss here. Really trying to stay in tuned. Just surpassed 50 pitches, did Golden. Yeah, that one's going to be hit this time into right field, still carrying a little bit back. It's going to be at the warning track and hauled in. Plan made by Mike and Miller out there in right field. Left fielder, number 23, Reed Hanberg. Reed Hanberg now stepping up to the plates. Struck out swinging last time and. Start with a swing, a swing and a miss here. One falls in for a strike. That one must have caught the bottom corner of the zone because that one was falling away. It was a breaking ball. He did not go, so he was going to be falling in for a ball one and two. Goldie would love it. Love one more K here to essentially be able to think of it as three up, three down following the home run. And that's exactly what he gets there. So even though it wasn't the perfect inning, definitely a solid, solid way to pick himself up following the homer. Great response that time to get right back into it. Johnson County still a 4-2 lead when we get back. State coordinates of new land acquisition 
Oh, well, you know that big oak tree that got struck by lightning? Negative. The barn with the funny cow mural? Negative. One-eyed scarecrow? Negative. Giant water tower? You're not from here, are you? I've never seen him. Robots don't know you. We do. Hey, how's your dad doing? For over 80 years, we built relationships first and plans second. It's your future. Let's protect it. Contact Farm Bureau agent Anthony Brown in Eudora today at 785-615-0516. At Kansas Insurance, the prescription drug pricing points to corporate mountain. Freedom of the press is about your right to know. It's about your right to be informed. Today, no. there are real threats to press freedom. Reaching residential areas. And your right to know about the world around us. We must protect our right to know, no matter what kind of news is important That's to you. Question. Before it's too late, understand the threats. Protectpressfreedom.org. Hey, welcome back in here. Chauncey County Sports Live. Dylan Vanderveen and Reed McAvoy. Four to two here in Johnson County. Been a good one here so far. That one in there for strike one. A solo shot by Brennan Fry. His 10th of the year for the Panthers. Made this game just one run closer. Johnson County looking at it's even the inning or possibly win it. That one's floating towards foul Ooh. will go there. All right. Unlucky. Oh. I guess it, I guess it must have hit off the net. Because McClure. Not the top there. Yeah. Yeah. It's not out. Leading off this inning, just as he did the inning previous, where the Cavs proceeded to have nine different batters come up to the plate. That one still slicing the left field. A nice job to reel it in. He's trying for two. Kerr's going to dive in there for an easy double. That one just had all types of slice on it as the left fielder was trying to chase it down in Hainburg. He's had no chance with the way that ball was angled. McClure did a nice job of sprinting all the way through and get two bases off of it. So now with no outs, a man in scoring position already. And look who you've got again. You've got two, three, four coming up in Fleck, Mosh, and Brewer. Yeah, and it's so big grabbing those extra bases like that. I mean, not that that, that one was, wasn't was going to be too close, but it was a good job by Hannenberg and left to uh, to challenge McClure as Fleck thought about going for a bunt there. Actually, he really tried and did not connect. They called that a ball. But only, How is that like, possible? So, it, well, in baseball, you have to offer towards the ball to bunt. Think, and to bunt for it to be a strike, but it looked like he offered. I think they called it a strike. I. It'll be... No, that's a foul. Could end up being a moot point, but I think our count might actually be 0-2. We'll see if the up gives any... Yeah, the only way that they say they didn't offer, he yes. just stuck it out there. Yeah, okay. I'm just stuck up a two, so it is indeed 0 2 on Fleck. But yeah, I was just saying, McClure getting definitely offered. I was like, he definitely offered towards yeah. it. I was like, I, I couldn't believe that I wasn't called a strike. But McClure getting to second is, is a way that games are changed, getting extra bases where you're not that supposed one will to. will land. Yes, it will. No catch on the dive. McClure will get to third. It was a nice try. By that center fielder in Brady, but no dice for him. It was an effort, but ends up out of his glove and now first and third with no outs. And Jack Mosh. Man, getting that getting that fly ball and that dive to seem so big for Yosho. I mean, they could have gotten one out, man on second, still kept McClure there. Now you're in all kinds of trouble, and that's exactly what happens. This is going to be first to third play. No, they're going to keep him at second. It will score in one in McClure, and will expand the lead back out to three, five to two in favor of the Cavs. Nice piece of hitting that time, just driving that through for a nice little base hit to the right side. Thought it was going to get first and third, but not a good enough jump that time to get there. It's funny contrast for Mosh having 
Got a bunt single his previous time and then ripping that one into right with solid contact to reach and get an RBI. And now oh, a soft Brewer. bunt. Brewer going to get one runner over, so now we're still with one out. They'll make anybody can do their job instead of having to bat for a base hit. Brewer doing everything today from base hits to sacrifice bunts. Yeah, which that does go down as a sack hit, so it doesn't go against the batting average. I'm sure he'll appreciate that. That, that now here is Hepburn. Sorry, I need to step nope, on you're good. Toes. That one, I believe, hit him. It did in another base. Another bases loaded situation. Um, but yeah, I was going to say credit to Hayden, the, the pitcher, for making that throw on to first. Uh, you know, normally, fielders want anybody but the guy on the mound to be the one that has to make the play, but Hayden settled in and threw Fleck out, got the out that he was given. But he then followed that up by pegging Hepburn in the back. So with one out, base is juiced for Mike and Miller. We know that he is capable of the long ball, but can he stay cool here? Micah Miller towards the right side and foul. That was Hayden's 75th pitch. Getting up there in time here. Bottom of the fourth inning, still plenty of time to be played. 75 pitches there in three and a third. Miller going to be taking that one. Look like straight down. Broadway right at the knee level. Man, if he could get under one, you might be able to see the flag at center right above that 400 sign is going straight out. So if he could, if Miller could get under one, he might be wind assisted. That one, oh, oh a little bit of a bad time, and it's going to be out at first base. So two outs, but it could have been a double play opportunity for Beck salvages it for one and gets an RBI is Mike and Miller. Fleck will score. So now at third base right there is Mosh. It's uh, it's definitely harsh, but I would have been interested to see Beck try and step on the bag there even after he made the mistake. Uh, I don't know. He was He was about a half step away from it and had the runner beat if he had done so. But instead, he opted for the, I suppose, more sure out. Not necessarily at first, but at least he got an out on the play. Credit to him for doing at least that. Black for his third at bat of the game. Flew out to center and then got a sacrifice fly to right field. Does have one RBI on the day. That one ends up outside in 2-1 count. Two walks and a single in the first game. One ends up too low. So now a three and one count. Good position if you're Jordan Black to be hitting in right now. Still an open base if you're Hayden. If you do somehow lock somebody. Looks like there is heavy action in the bullpen for the Panthers. That one is a walk, so Hayden will lose Black. And will that call someone in it? Will. I would at least expect a mound visit. Could be more. And hope he is going to his bullpen. So we're going to see, it looks like Cameron Robertson coming in, number 42, 6'3", sophomore out of Galena, Missouri. But we'll first wrap up the day 
for Hayden. He goes three and two thirds, facing 24 batters through 81 pitches. Gave up seven hits, six runs, five of them earned, two walks, three strikeouts, three hit batters is a number that might jump off the page at you. And he did strand five runners. The Cavs batted 389 against him on the day. And then coming in for him will be Cameron Robertson. Looking at his season so far in 16 innings pitched. He's given up 14 hits, 7 runs, 4 of them earned, 2 walks, 18 strikeouts. And he has a 2.25 ERA. So a solid right-handed pitcher. He's got a 3-1 and one record so far on the ear. Coming in here with two outs, six to two in the game, seven to three in total hits, just the one error as well on the scoreboard. But Johnson County, just an overall well rounded approach here. Last game, it was 13 to two in hits, so total in hits today of 20 to five for the two sides, total of four runs compared to 14. We will step away here for a quick 30 seconds, bring you back when we got everything situated, ready to go. More time before you wake up in the wild. Our natural world needs us now. Step by step, side by side, together, we can find a way to ensure that all life on Earth can thrive. To learn more about how you can help protect and conserve nature, visit nature.org. Here back in Johnson County. There's a 6-2 game just coming in. A new pitcher here for Nasho. Coming off the, uh, the hit by pitch is Rowe which made me think, oh, I, I don't know if I mentioned what Robertson's hit batter's tally is. It's five. So he's uh, he's no stranger to plunking the batter. And he's, tell that's him clear. Yeah, even though uh, I don't know if Rowe would exactly appreciate that, he would probably take the RBI. Oh, a 2-0 and count already behind here to start it off. And with his pitch now, it's a great going pitch. in there for a strike. So two and one. That was perfect location there, right on the outside. Not much that can be done with that. Well, it's interesting. The two guys that they go back and forth, nine total hit batters between the two coming in today. The guys that they went through with Cooper Hayden and now choosing Cameron Robertson, so very uh, non-batter friendly today for their pitching selections. The 31, that one in there for strike two, gets to the number six pitch of the at-bat, is right on the corner. Why walk your opponent when you can leave him with a bruise, you know? Everything full. The three, two count, two outs. Bases loaded. People are going to be moving. Everybody's going to have to throw it across the diamond. Big opportunity here. Try to break this game open. It is a six to two score. One fly can make this game nearly ungettable. Renee Show, that one hit in the left. That one's not going to do it. Running in is Hainberg and will make the catch. Ran over it just a little bit, made it a little bit more complicated than it needed to be. But Nia Show will go and get the out. So 6-2 to two here from Johnson County when we get back.
what would happen if, if I had to pick up the phone, call 911 for one of my family members or one of my neighbors, what would I do if, if no one was on the other end to respond? What if there was no 911? So you can be a part of the solution. Anybody can be a firefighter, male, female, younger, older. We are school teachers. We are leaders in business. Is me, you, anyone that wants to be. There is no typical firefighter. Save the Children believes childhood without food is unimaginable. Yet around the world, children are suffering from the worst famine in our lifetime, coupled with conflict, poverty, climate change, and more. Join Save the Children and get fed up. Fed up with the lack of progress. Fed up with the injustice. Learn how you can get involved in the fight against childhood hunger at savethechildren.org slash get fed up. I'm fed up. We're, We're fed, fed up. up. We're fed up. Welcome back in here, Johnson County Sports Live, Dylan Van Deveen. And Reed McAvoy. Six to two, seven hits to three hits, total in the two games, 20 hits to a total of five for the side of the Panthers. Straight up in 14 to four in total runs between the two games. This one, a six to two score. Brady. That one hit over and fouled off by Brady. Davin popped out to third the last time. Oh, and big swing and a miss. Nearly hit the umpire with his bat on the backswing. Goldie's doing really well here. This is about to be his 60th pitch. I don't know if the Cavs would ever think about having him do a sixth inning, which let's have him get through the fifth first, but that's a great start here. His 60th pitch is a swing and miss strikeout. I believe that is K number seven. Indeed. For Golden, so having one heck of a day so far here between four and a third innings worth of work. I went just off the place, missed with the off speed. Yeah, I mean, uh, Burkett and uh, Chambers had nine combined strikeouts in the last game. He's almost got that himself through not even a full five innings. Two and one here for Goldie. And that one will find the zone just a little bit outside. Now he's in a tough spot here. Will he want to attack or maybe hope to get a swing and miss from Beck? He is in the nine hole. Maybe it's for a reason. That one is a... Strike, so back to full count. It's not going to take anything away, however, from Beck here. He was the one that hit the home run. Yep. From that exact position in the nine hole. So Dang. that one, a kind of um, only upper half swing is kind of how I upper half type of swing. It's a late decision yeah. to swing for sure. And, uh, yeah, that's a great job by Goldie to recover that AB from 3-1 to getting a swing and miss strikeout. He is definitely cruising right now. Ooh. I went land, but it crossed just a little bit high. He nearly buckled Rodriguez. That one came in there at 89. That's not where Goldie's typically been living, but just showing it off. Oh, and the off speed gets him again, two and one. So far in this game, Rodriguez 0 for 1 with a walk. Walked to begin the game off Goldie. And since then, that is the only walk that Goldie has issued in this game was that first 
batter walk to Rodriguez. That's a strike there and a 3-1 count. Now full. So whenever I was an umpire too, also when kids like started running down the line, like before the ball was like almost even in the plate where I didn't call anything, they just started jogging. I call it a strike. Like, I mean, unless it was like way off, you know what I'm talking about? If it was anywhere close, it's like, don't be running away, man. Don't be running away. Like what a uh, what a job there by Golden struck out the side. All of them went down swinging. So spectacular work there by Josiah Golden. Hey folks, save a thousand bucks on your interior painting project this winter. Hire Absolute Painting during November through February and qualify for 10% off your project, a free paint upgrade, and a free color consultation to make sure you choose the perfect colors to transform your home. This amazing offer only lasts until our winter calendar is booked and spots are filling up fast. Call now and save a thousand bucks on your interior project. No money down affordable monthly payment options are available. This offer won't last long, so call now to save a thousand bucks on your interior project with Absolute Painting, where quality is absolute. Justin Tisdale. Tisdale going to be the first hitter back up here. Johns County Sports Live 6-2 game. He walked. Oh, a big swing and miss by Tisdale to start this off. Oh, been struggling so far. Has had a couple of decent at-bats, but hasn't done a ton. That's when he's going to Almost bunt, pulls it back at the last second. To the fact of a drag bunt possibly situation. Still no crash whatsoever by third baseman or first baseman. That one nearly hits him and looked like the angle was coming right at him, ends up just inside. A 1-1 delivery here by Robertson. That one, soft contact on a jam shot towards the right side and foul. Two two is actually the count here, says the ump. So the counts are even, and that one falls outside. Yeah, your screen says two two, but it is a full count here. So three and two, looking for a possible walk. No, going to get a hit. No, towards the left side. Hard contact this time on the pole. Now it's still hits a soft pop fly. Looks like it's back going to be under, and he will. So one down here. The left field number 17, Jake McCarter. Six two, still seven and three in hits. Now that one poked in to the right center. Can he get there? No. I'm going to fall and still having a little bit of trouble getting up and now going for a triple, trying to go home. They're going to send him. McClure's going to go to the plate, and he can't get there in time. A nice wow. relay and a nice tag by Moore to get him. McClure nearly got there, was just a couple seconds late. A risky sin by the third base coach, and it cost him two outs now here in the bottom of the fifth. Yeah, that was an interesting one there. I mean, obviously ripped into it. 
did McClure. And I think that Brady Davin might be shaken up out in center. It seems like he's going to go on, but uh, he stayed down for a while there. Ended up having to be the right fielder, Fry, that got it in. And yeah, a, a gutsy send by Coach Yeager at third. You got to appreciate, appreciate it. Uh, but yeah, uh, couldn't get in there. Great tag by Moore. And, and honestly, it's it's a it's a case of keeping them honest as they've done all day with the bunts and such, uh, of just making them prove it. Those hard those even the the stuff that seems simple that it's hard to do um, at, at at full speed. It's just so challenging. Um, so they did a really good job there. You called out the great relay. Uh, they get get them out. So it goes down as a triple. But McClure's not going to be feeling as happy as the average person that just hit a triple. Now into a hole again here is Robertson 3-0. And he'll throw ball four a little bit too high. So a four-pitch walk will be issued to Fleck. The second base number 37, Jack Marsh. Jack Mosh is going to come up to the plates. Mosh so far today, a fly out to the first baseman, a couple of singles, RBI. This one hit into center field, back towards the wall. Keep on carrying towards the warning track, about five or six feet away from the wall. And that's how the inning will be retired. After five, six to two in favor of the Cavaliers. We'll bring you back. Johnson County Sports Live. At Kansas Insurance, we know one size doesn't fit all. In fact, our whole mindset is based on customized policies for you and your families. We're local, and we do what we do because we care about you. Think of us as brokers for your insurance needs. Working with Kansas Insurance gets you the award-winning service and attention to detail that only an independent agency can provide. All across Kansas, we're here to help you manage and plan for all types of risk. Contact a local agent today. Kansas Insurance. Local. Independent. Serving you. Everybody can make something because I think everyone has a spark of creativity and the reason that I have to keep making is because I don't think my life would be as fulfilling without it. If you make things yourself, that means you're not cowering in fear. You're out there taking chances. That I think is my way of saying I love you to the world. All right, now I want to hear why you make. Share your own Why I Make story today. Visit whyimake.org. Back in here, Johnson County Sports Live. 6-2 to two game, been much of the same. That inning went scoreless in the fifth for both sides. That one nearly, watching the throw nearly popped him in the face. Uh, that was Mosh. He's a watch his lips over there at second base on those throwdowns. That one nearly skipped and popped him right there. So we're, we're going to be asking for a sixth inning of work out of Goldie. Not something you've seen a whole lot this season for Johnson County pitchers. Cool to see him getting that chance. And it's because he's at 72 pitches, and he is dealing. Struck out the side last time around, all swinging. So uh, he is definitely feeling it right now. There is some mild movement in the pen. Everyone's still wearing jackets over there, so no one is expecting to have to be called into action immediately. But Golden back out there for a sixth inning and what has been a really good performance for him. They did have Stone as well as Borberg pitch seven innings a piece in the first two games of the series yesterday. Both pitched very well, obviously only giving up two total runs to Yosho yesterday in the two games. Or excuse me, one run actually because it was 11-1 and one nothing. Goalie doing much of the same here, shutting them down to two runs. I'll say I would be a bit surprised to see a seventh inning. That one thrown over. A nice play by Jack Mosh. Quick with his feet, waiting all that time. But do you see what I'm saying? You know, 
how long it took to get the ground ball to second base sometimes. It just takes so long to get there sometimes. I feel like it's like I'd rather be at third base, have that ball in my hand, and have it in control. More of my style of play, but going back nice to play by Mosh. You're saying why you it like like the hot corner more than second? One for two on the day. This one hit up and it's going to be shallow coming in is Miller. Easy making the play. Two outs. The right fielder, right fielder number 19, Brendan Fry. Fry, of course. Coming off the home run, steps into the box now. Had two good plate appearances today. Has both of the RBIs in this one. Had one on the sacrifice fly and back in the first inning and then had the home run in the fourth. One says no go on the inside corner. Even to back up at ones. Which someone from the Johnson County dugout did not like that. Cannot be a ball. Was the uh, call out. I want to hit back into center field and we'll fall for a two out base hit. And looking like he could have. There's any type of hesitation there. He probably could have taken second, but. The judge member, Dirty Dirty Moore. So that refreshes this count six to two. Fourth hit of the day here for Naosho against Goldie. Looks like. Novotny is the one that's up in the pen for the Cavs. Can't be 100% sure on that, but. No one count. We're over there. And that's two. Yeah, scoreboard was wrong there on your screen. It says a one and three count, which is not a thing. For now. That is 0 and 2, not 1 and 2, but. We uh we just we just filmed the scoreboard for the stadium here. We don't actually necessarily condone it. It just tends to be helpful. Ninety-five time or ninety-five times out of hundred, they have it right. One and two. That one hit right back into center field as well. So back to back base hits in the same spot. Crashing in on it and doing a well job not to make sure that anybody advances. The designated hitter number 25, Tyler. It's his deal, so first and second here with two outs. Now there's a question. Do you stick with Goldie? And that seems that the answer... I think he's going to go out and talk to him right now. It doesn't look like he's... See, what what what's the deal here? Definitely he's on the brink of being pulled from this game, which he's had a great day. Seems like it's just going to be a, a visit for now, so not taking him out of the game. You want to take a short break, DV? Yeah, we'll take a 30-second break. Come back here in Johnson County Sports Live right after. Back in here in Johnson County, an absolutely perfect 30-second timeout. I want to hit foul right back. Shout out to the director, man. Who's doing that? <laughs> oh, one, two outs. Looking to close out this sixth inning of work is Goldie. Yeah, 
They're the only one with a couple of runners on. That one will end up low on the off speed. Nearly broke towards it. We have to think that if he doesn't get his guy here, might be the end of the day, but that's a big step towards getting his guy. Gets a one and two count now here for Goldie. One pitch away from getting through six innings worth of work. Just five hits, two earned runs. And here is the one, two. That one fouled straight back. Eighty eight pitches for Golden. So I would think even if he does get this out, he probably doesn't come back, but it's been a really good day and would love to see him keep his run total at two. Especially if he does it by way of a strike strikeout. Here's the pitch. That one will end up too low and get the count out of evens, trying to get him to chase a little bit. Counts at 2-2 two, two and two outs. The triple twos on the scoreboard. Pitch, and that one's going to be driven into left field. Will they try it? No, they will not. Nice play to get it in quickly. Nice cut off by Black, and the bases are juiced here for Goldie. So it looks like they will stick with Goldie for now. Interesting. Left fielder number 23, Reed Hamburg. I like the decision to let him try to work through his mess, try to get out of it himself. Yeah, you'd hate to, to pull him and have those guys come around and score, and he's responsible for them. Plus, Novotny has a... 3-7 ERA, so I don't think the idea for bringing him into this game is in a is in a stressful, important situation. I think they were hoping it would be a little more casual bringing him into this game. Nice job, at least getting majority of that to stop any type of pass ball. The three straight singles have led it to bases loaded after a couple of quick outs here. First it was Fry, then more than Leonard. That one, that one's gonna go too far outside, a little bit too high, and now a two-one count. And and Hanneberg has struck out twice. Oh oh two. Oh for two. So uh that's definitely gotta be what what you'd think Goldie would be looking for here. I want in there for strike two. Big strike Hainberg two. didn't like it, thought it was a little bit low. It will remain at twos apiece. That is a huge call there. It definitely was borderline, and the difference between 3-1 and 2-2 two, two is massive. Here's the pitch. No, did not go. No good, and they will see a seventh. And it's all full. Full count, two outs, bases loaded, runners be in motion. Something's got to give here. Here's the three, two from the full stretch for Goldie. Payoff pitch, two outs, and story called. Killer and the dagger for Goldie. Hangberg is wrapped up on three strike calls. Six to two, Johnson County and Goldie gets out of it, and it will remain a four point or four run game when we get back.
For more than 20 years, Gherkin Rental has been the place to go to get the job done in eastern Kansas and western Missouri. With a huge selection of quality equipment, from roll-offs to trailers, telehandlers to generators, power washers to popcorn makers, experienced equipment professionals, and clean, well-maintained tools to help you get the job done right the first time. Gherkin Rental. Stop by any of their 13 locations across the KC Metro or call 855-GERKINS. That's 855-437-5367. Hey folks, save a thousand bucks on your interior painting project this winter. Hire Absolute Painting during November through February and qualify for 10% off your project, a free paint upgrade, and a free color consultation to make sure you choose the perfect colors to transform your home. This amazing offer only lasts until our winter calendar is booked and spots are filling up fast. Call now and save a thousand bucks on your interior project. No money down affordable monthly payment options are available. This offer won't last long, so call now to save a thousand bucks on your interior project with Absolute Painting, where quality is absolute. So here, welcome back here to Johnson County Community College. Ready to go here for the bottom of the sixth inning, a six to two lead here for Johnson County. It was a huge strikeout by goalie looking to strike out Hamburg. Brewer comes in having a bit of an odd uh, game where he popped out to the first baseman in his first A.B., Walked in his second and had a sack bunt in his third. So all told, it comes out to 0 for 1 with a walk and a sack hit. Had a great game in the first. This one, that one is going to be low. Ball two. And they are, uh, Neosho is fully sticking with Robertson. Only having thrown 20 pitches coming into this inning. They have no one up in the pen. And he's been good since he's come in. The 3-0 delivery, that one will fall for ball four. So a four-pitch walk to Brewer. He'll take his slow little trot down to first base. Hopefully he didn't have a hit streak going because his day stays at 0 for 1. Did have three big ones in the first game. Burn today through three at bats has a ground out, a hit by a pitch, and a K. So 0 for 2. That one ends up outside. So 1 0 count. That one hit towards third. Could be trouble with a double play. It will be 1 and it will be 2. So a double play ball here, Hepburn hit into it. Brewer was out at second, so just like that, one pitch in, two outs. The right fielder, number 26, Munkin Miller. Mike and Miller here up. Towards the right side and foul. One and one, two out, six to two is the score. Six to seven in total hits. Johnson County still leading that by one. However, catching up was no show with three singles and three stranded runners last inning. So far today, Mike and Miller, a double, a walk, and then a ground ball to the shortstop. That pitch, that one hit towards second. Easily taken on a hop and thrown away by Rodriguez. So three outs. Really, if you want to look at it, one, two, three. A four-pitch walk to Brewer. A double play one pitch later. And Johnson County back on defense here when we come back. <laughs> Prescription drug pricing, 
points to corporate mouth. Freedom of the press is about your right to know. It's about your right to be informed. Today, no. there are real threats to press freedom. And your right to know about the world around us. We must protect our right to know, no matter what kind of news is important That's to you. Before it's too late, understand the threats. Protectpressfreedom.org. Dan, you need to go. Really? It's important. I feel fine. Look, you cannot mess around with this kind of stuff. Some cancers... That... Man, we just don't want to lose you from something we could have caught. What do I need to do? You just give your doctor a call, and they'll tell you what screening test you need. Fine. Can I have my pie now? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Welcome back here to Johnson County. Dylan Vanderveen here in the booth with you. Got a pitcher change. Let you take it away here, Ray. Tell me about him. Yeah, so right-handed pitcher Sam Novotny comes in. He'll be making his seventh appearance on the season, his sixth in relief. He's through 14 and two-thirds innings of work. He's got a 3.68 ERA, a 1-2 whip, and 18 strikeouts. So he's been pretty solid. Since we, it's been a topic of interest, I'll check on hit batters, and he's got zero, a donut for hit batters. There you go. Fortunate if you uh, if McClure was not on his team. <laughs> so he, uh, we can also wrap up Goldie's day. He had a spectacular one. Six innings of work through 96 pitches, allowed six hits, two runs, both earned, one walk, ten strikeouts, five runners stranded, no wild pitches. The Panthers hit 261 against him. So six and two is still this score, still one swing away if they could get them loaded. Hainberg had them loaded last time and watched two pitches go right down the plate. I believe this is the first AB we've seen of Brady Davin since he uh, sort of got shaken up out in center. So maybe that's something to keep an eye on. That one hit towards the left side and foul, so still a one and two. We'll see the fifth pitch of the at bat. So far today, Brady not doing a whole lot, just a fly out to the third baseman and a K, and now a couple of Ks. And now Beck will come up here, has. Had that one infield single, a K today. Had the home run in the first game. That one broken in there for strike one. Strike two. That one is in there for strike two. Fired in at 87. One and two still here. Novotny making quick work here. Pitching much like Chambers was. That one spun in there for a ball. Yeah, he might uh he might be trying to work quickly here since his team has the lead. I saw a thing recently. I went back and was watching an old R Royals game from 2016, sort of reminiscing on the good old days. Uh, <laughs> and uh, they talked about that somebody, they came into a game and they were winning by seven. And that you, that, that you, when you come into a game like that, which obviously this isn't that same score, but when you come into a game like that, um, you might go out there and just start, just try to throw strikes, just try to get out of there and go home. Uh, rather than going out there and, and playing your game, you know, going out there and throwing your best stuff and trying to get the better of the batter and setting stuff up. Um, if you're in a game that is, that is, there's a big difference between the two teams. You might just go out there and 
try to send everybody home as fast as possible, and you could end up getting yourself beat around in the process. Not that Novotny's doing that, but I just thought that was an interesting thing to think about, that if you feel that everybody's impatient, you might go out there and throw impatiently. There are two outs, and that one hit down the same place. That one's going to fall into no man's land. It will be a base hit for Rodriguez. His first hit of the game. He was 0 for 2 with the walk before that. Now being Westerman up here, having a little bit better day. Had a couple of fielders' choice in a ground ball. Last time he had three strikeouts, so at least put the ball in play. All in one, two outs. Even now it's seven apiece in hits. Big swing and a miss by Westerman. And now looking for a strikeout here. Is Novotny the pitch and the drive into right field. A second base hit on an 0-2 count. This time to right field. The first one was in zeros. That one's an 0-2 and just left it too far over the plate. Gives up a base hit here to Westerman, his first of the day between the two games. And both times, the both of those hits, Novotny got taken opposite field. So they may be a little bit behind his stuff, but able to do so, able to, to maybe knuckle it in over to right field. Well, lands inside on that first one, but trying to close this out here. Novotny giving up a couple of singles. Last time, three singles given up with two outs as well. That one fouled straight back. I doubt they'll be coming in just yet, but there are a couple arms up in the pen for the Cavs. In Franca and Bergren, a righty and a lefty. This is a big spot here because something big could really hurt the Cavs. I want to hit right in the center field, right to him. How to move about four feet was Tisdale, and nothing really takes place. Two more left, stranded five total in the last two innings by the Panthers. Still six to two here from Johnson County. Question, what will you find on all over-the-counter or OTC medicine packages to help you choose the right drug and use it safely? The answer, the drug facts label. This label lists the medicine's active ingredients and purpose, how much to take, and warnings you should know before using it. Remember, even OTC medicines you buy without a prescription can cause side effects you don't want. So follow the information listed on the drug facts label. For more information, visit FDA.gov slash drug facts label. A message from the U.S. Food and Drug Administration. For more than 20 years, Gherkin Rental has been the place to go to get the job done in eastern Kansas and western Missouri. With a huge selection of quality equipment, from roll-offs to trailers, telehandlers to generators, power washers to popcorn makers. Experienced equipment professionals and clean, well-maintained tools to help you get the job done right. The first time, Gherkin Rental. Stop by any of their 13 locations across the KC Metro or call 855-GHERKINS. That's 855-437-5367. Welcome back here into Johnson County. Jordan Black. Jordan Black. Going to start it off here for Johnson County. They there. went in there for strike one. They're again sticking with Robertson. No one even up in the pen. But I can't blame him. Only 30 pitches thrown. Only took him 10 pitches to get through the last inning. And he's only let up one hit, two walks. So he's having a very good day. That one fooled up Jordan Black just a little bit. Thought that was going to go a little bit more down. Just kind of yeah. stayed up there, tilled right almost towards his face rather than down. I mean, that was closer to the strike zone than hitting him, I feel like. But he also crowds the plate like crazy. As you see there. 
Maybe uh actually definitely Robertson trying to back him off, and I think it worked. He's a few inches more to the left this time around. And that one oh, in the left center doesn't matter. Oh, stays in. Oh, oh, oh. Ooh, I thought that one was gone off the bat. Somehow it stays in with the wind blowing out. Went about 350 feet, needed 370. And it is a long first out. That would have been a really sweet one for Black after taking two, uh, two pieces around the head. He would have liked to say, uh, take that one. But in the end, just a loud out, unfortunately. Time is running out here if you're a Panthers fan. Just six outs left to go on the offensive side. Four runs to get up, and that one hit a ton into right center. Way gone out of here in a hurry. A Cavalier crank off the bat of row. And it is extends this lead here. Seven. The two for the Cavaliers. It is Rose. Second home run of the season. It got out in an absolute hurry. Had to be hit at about 95 miles an hour. Getting out and it went right over 370 and right center. Yeah, that's huge there. We were just talking about how Robertson only given up one hit. Seemed like he was settling in. Then Black gets the uh, the really solid contact on him. And all of a sudden, he's finally taken deep. The Cavs get it to be a uh, greater than one possession, one swing this term we're trying to come up with lead. They've got five runs to the good now. That's definitely cause for, uh, cause for some being comfortable. Well, his first hit of the day comes... In the span of a home run. Tisdale now trying to get something going on his side. Tisdale is a commit to Oklahoma Baptist University. I want to hit an off the net, but a 7-2 to game. That was the first run scored in two and a half innings. No run scored in any of the fifth or the sixth. Top of the seventh, also a zero for Neosho. So breaking that streak is Johnson County off the bat of row. 7-2, 2-2 pitch. Ends up past the catcher, wild pitch. In a lot of ways, this game is feeling a little similar to the last one. Obviously, a lot more hits for Neosho this time around. Eight compared to their two, but just the way that it's playing out, that it feels really close, but the Cavaliers actually have a large lead. Tisdale shut down on an off-speed, kind of a half-swing. Was fooled on it. McClure, dare I say, Needs a home run for the cycle. He is three for three plus a hit by pitch. That one hitting the ground ball. It will not be a home run. It will be a ground out to the second baseman. Thank you for ruining that opportunity, I, Mr. Reed. I know. I know. <laughs> I was kidding. I was kidding. We'll step aside here. Just a short break. Johnson County Sports Live. I used to drive an ambulance as an EMT, and I've always tried to be a safe driver. If people knew what I know, lives could be saved. In my car, if I see a truck or bus taking a turn, I know to take my time. When big vehicles turn right, they may swing wide to make the turn. If you try to sneak in, well, it's a lesson you'd rather not learn the hard way. When trucks and buses turn, let's you and I wait. It's our roads, it's our safety.
Welcome back here into Johnson County. 7-2 game off the home run of Rowe. Expanded it. The bottom of the seventh, Brendan Fry, the big power hitter here with already one home run. Up to bat here for the Panthers. Looks like they're more trying to spin it towards him rather than throw him any type of hard fastball in Fry. There's a movement in both pens now. So potentially Robertson's day done on the other side of things. Here are the one and two to fry. That one ends up low in the dirt. That was odd. Hepburn looked like he was standing up before that one even got to him. Two two delivery by Novotny ends up high. So Fry will push this to a full count here. Something definitely a credit to Naosho on the day. Battling in counts is something they've done really, really well. But doing anything with it has not. And that continues. Novot so between the sorry, go ahead. Picks up a second strikeout. No, you're good. So the first strikeout that time for Fry in either one of the two games against Johnson County and today. Body pitching fairly well since he's came in. Yep. No one ends up just outside. He did get into a little bit of trouble right at the end of the of the previous inning, but got out of it unscathed. That spinner lands, and it will be a 1-1. One, one. Here is the pitch. That one grounded towards third. A two-and-two two count. Running out of time, if you're a Panthers fan, now just five outs left to go on the offensive side of this game. Yeah, they need base runners. Base runners, base runners, base runners. Any way they can come by them. They, they, they'll take a hit by pitch or a catcher's interference. They don't care. Another full count. Pushing it again here to Novotny. The 3-2 payoff pitch coming on its way and will be a swing and a miss strikeout number three for Novotny. And, oh, that's not – that's always a bad thing. Yeah. Yeah, look at him. Look at the cat. Yeah. Well, he knows. He knows. Jordan Black, yeah, he he, he over or he under threw Jordan Black. Had to go all the way in the left field on the around the horn. Oh. Just – just it makes you look so bad. It takes so long to like throw the ball back in. It makes you look like you're trying to be fancy and then did something wrong. Like I always hated that, you know. But on the K, I mean, how about that? The uh, Nao show again, working another full count, and then 87. Novotny cocked back, threw that one in there, and never gave a chance to the batter. Just absolutely blew it by him. It was in the catcher's mitt before he even realized he needed to swing. That one spins in there again, so a one and two count now here to Leonard. How about that pitch mix from Novotny? Dropped that one in at 76, fell out of the sky into the far right part of the zone. Pairing that one with his 87 is a uh, nice little duo there. Easy PFP that time for Novotny, and now through seven and a half, seven to two, Johnson County. What would happen if, if I had to pick up the phone, call 911 for one of my family members or one of my neighbors? What would I do if, if no one was on the other end to respond? What if there was no 911? So you can be a part of the solution. Anybody can be a firefighter, male, female, younger, older. We are school teachers. We are leaders in business. Is me, you, anyone that wants to be. There is no typical firefighter.
Are you looking for a trusted partner in pet care? Look no further than Eudora Animal Hospital, proudly serving Eudora and the surrounding area since 1975. Eudora Animal Hospital offers a wide range of services, including wellness exams, surgeries, routine vaccinations, and emergency care. Hi guys, just wanted to say thank you from Eudora Animal Hospital for all your support and Go Cards! Schedule an appointment by calling 785-542-3265 or visit eudoravet.com. Welcome back here to Johnson County. Dylan Vanderveen in the broadcast booth, 7-2. to Even on the terms of hits, just the one air on the side of Neosho. But, I mean, not a whole lot of runs being scored late in this game. There was all but one of them scored in the first four innings. The only one hit was Rose home run. And right center, that was it. Johnson County's last inning that happened, so... Looking maybe you try to expand this lead here in the eighth inning, get a couple of extra before you go into the ninth. And we do have a pitching change as well. Coming into the game in place of Robertson is Connor Wolf. He's a lefty, as you can see, out of Lafayette, Colorado. His fastball is about around 83 miles an hour. Looking at the season stats, he's thrown seven innings. He's given up two hits, no runs allowed, one walk, six strikeouts. So he has a zero ERA. No one is yet to cross the plate against him. And Fleck gets to step in from the right side, or the right-handed batter's box, that is, facing the lefty pitcher. He takes two strikes right away here and puts himself in a hole. That one towards second. Fleck trying to run it out, but easy play money for Rodriguez. That's going to bring up Mosh to the plate again. Two for four. That one fouled way back. So look at Johnson County. A little bit on their schedule past this game. If they were to win and close out this one, they would go to 18 and 6 on the season. Next few games go against a uh, four game series against Fort Scott. We will also be on the call for that one on March 16th here on Johnson County Sports Live. Don't want to miss that. They play the first two on that Thursday, the 14th, at Fort Scott. Play the next two at home on that Saturday as that one is just trickled down the line and easily stepped on the bag. Mosh is retired. It is for three, Dagan Brewer. Dagan Brewer going to step up here to the plate one last time for Johnson County today. Uh, I mentioned the weird day in terms of the box score with the 0 for 1, two walks, and a sacrifice hit. So 7 to 2, and that one low again on Brewer. I'm going to go to 2 and 0. If you're the Cavs. After this, whatever ends up happening at the end of this inning, you got to go there, shut them three up, three down, and walk home cleanly with four wins in conference play. I went right back to him. And easy PFP, three up, three down on the side for an Aosho. <laughs> and a seven to two game when we come back after the short break. to go really it's important i feel fine look you cannot mess around with this kind of stuff some cancers that... man we just don't want to lose you from something we could have caught what i need to do you just give your doctor a call 
they'll tell you what screening test you need. Fine. Can I have my pie now? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Question, what will you find on all over-the-counter or OTC medicine packages to help you choose the right drug and use it safely? The answer, the drug facts label. This label lists the medicine's active ingredients and purpose, how much to take, and warnings you should know before using it. Remember, even OTC medicines you buy without a prescription can cause side effects you don't want. So follow the information listed on the drug facts label. For more information, visit FDA.gov slash drug facts label. A message from the U.S. Food and Drug Administration. Welcome in here to Johnson County. We get a new pitcher, I believe, on the mound here for Johnson County. We do. It looks like it will be a closer on the mound for them. We've got it going on it for the statistics. I'm going to switch you back over here to Mr. Reed. Yeah, I'm just pulling him up for Austin Bergren out of Olathe, Kansas, the right-handed sophomore. Looking at his stats on the season, five games so far, eight and a third innings pitched, seven hits allowed, one run, but it was not earned, so he's got a zero ERA, 11 strikeouts to two walks, and a 1.08 whip, so very effective in the short time that he has gotten so far this season. Hopefully, the Cavs are hoping for another quick inning here from him. They can get out and go home with a victory. Looking back, we'll, we'll go ahead and uh, look back on the other two pitchers' days who have just ended. They're not just ended. They, we missed the chance to wrap up. Uh, oh, actually, that was an Aosha pitcher. Sorry, excuse me. We'll just wrap up Novotny's day. He went two innings, faced eight batters. Allowed two hits, no runs, no walks, three strikeouts, stranded two runners, and they bat 250 against him. So trying to close out these last three. One fired in there for strike one. Actually got a pinch hitter going on here. Hanneberg has come out. For Dale. Dale gets a swing and a miss on that one, so 0 and 2. One is too high. I'll have, to, I'll have to keep an eye on the radar gun on the next one. That one was fired in there. Here the one, two. That one fired in there at 89 miles an hour. A swing and a miss. And the first strikeout for him. And that is going to be just two outs away now. Another pinch hitter. This time coming in for Brady Davin. His Cuser. That's Dallas Cuser, number nine. Cuser, the first time here we've seen him today. One at bat so far in the four games against Johnson County. Went 0 for 1 with a strikeout. And a 1 and 1 count. That one fired right in there. That was 89 miles an hour again. When it hits him right in the foot for the second batter, we'll get a free hit by pitch. First time Dallas has reached against Johnson County, and it will go to another batter 
And another pinch hitter here. You're going to Peyton Burns. He's hitting 133 on the season, but only 15 ABs. He comes in for Beck. Eight strikeouts in those 15 ABs, too. Seven and two. And that's the next guy in the order. One thrown in there, and it is outside. Big swing and a miss. Monster cut. The Cavs do actually still have empty. And Franco warming up in the bullpen, which is interesting. The uh, the lefty, I doubt we would see him, but he's out there warming up pretty intensely. Might just be getting in some extra practice reps and stuff like that, just in case something yeah. really bizarre starts happening. Yeah, definitely better to be prepared for the worst than you know have the worst come and you're not ready for it, so it gets even worse. Here's the one, two. Bullseye and swing and a miss by Burns. And a second out of the inning. Just one away now from the series sweep. Presented base to number three, Gilbert Rodriguez. One hit in the center field, and this could do it. It will a Cavalier win. Here's seven to two in the second game. A full nine, eight to eight in hits, but Johnson County comes up big. A series win, 11 to one, one to nothing, eight to two, and seven to two here today. Final of those two of those four games, and we'll bring you back here with a post game show. In just a few minutes, but Johnson County, four wins and a 17 and, or excuse me, 18 and six record. State coordinates of new land acquisition. Oh, you know that big oak tree that got struck by lightning? Negative. The barn with the funny cow mural? Negative. One-eyed scarecrow? Negative. Giant water tower? You're not from here, are you? I've never seen him. Robots don't know you. We do. Hey, how's your dad doing? For over 80 years, we've built relationships first and plans second. It's your future. Let's protect it. Contact Farm Bureau agent Anthony Brown in Eudora today at 785-615-0516. Just like the Cardinals are striving for success, Caw Valley State Bank's mission is your success. At Caw Valley State Bank, they provide the best, most efficient, courteous, and professional banking services possible. And at Caw Valley, they recognize that the customer and their satisfaction is the most important ingredient to growing their community. With all the services you've come to expect from the hometown partner you deserve. Caw Valley State Bank, online at kvsb.com. A proud supporter of Eudora Schools. I used to drive an ambulance as an EMT, and I've always tried to be a safe driver. If people knew what I know, lives could be saved. In my car, if I see a truck or bus taking a turn, I know to take my time. When big vehicles turn right, they may swing wide to make the turn. If you try to sneak in, well, it's a lesson you'd rather not learn the hard way. When trucks and buses turn, let's you and I wait. It's our roads, it's our safety.
more time before you wake up in the wild. Our natural world needs us now. Step by step, side by side, together, we can find a way to ensure that all life on Earth can thrive. To learn more about how you can help protect and conserve nature, visit nature.org. The smoothest, the creamiest, the most amazing ice cream you've ever Back here to Johnson County, Dylan Vanderveen in the broadcast booth with you. Johnson County, two great wins here today, seven to two earlier, an eight to two win. So, not really anywhere close for either one of them today. It was a great effort, but led by not only if anybody you're going to say player of the game for, it is going to be Mr. Goalie, the starting pitcher here for Johnson County, going six innings and making good work with only two earned over six hits. Yeah, I know he absolutely killed it. Just looking at the uh, the box score for him. Of course, the winning pitcher, the six hits, the two runs, 10 Ks. The, the uh, Cavs has come away with 15 Ks on the day as a team. Only one walk allowed. Just a really impressive day that they had. Um, and, you know, the, on the other side of things, they were assisted by the fact that Neosho committed two errors, one of them that did lead to a run. Um, it was... It's weird, but I said both of these games felt really similar where the actual baseball being played felt like it was on a pretty similar standard. Like the two teams were not, it, it didn't feel like the Cavaliers were going out there and crushing the Panthers. Like it was, it was a good game of baseball, but then you look up at the scoreboard and you realize actually, no, the Cavaliers are pretty comfortably on top. And this was something I could not point out last time. I quite apropos as the Cavs have quite literally brought out the brooms following the series sweep. And the doubleheader sweep here today on Johnson County Sports Live. Uh, unbelievable games here for Brewer as well as Hepburn in the first game. We talked to Brewer a little bit post game. You better go quick. Hopefully, we can get somebody going and see if we can get um, Goldie on this thing. We are going to take a short break, see what we can get for the rest of the post game show. Great. <laughs> You need to go. Really? It's important. I feel fine. Look, you cannot mess around with this kind of stuff. Some cancers... That... Man, we just don't want to lose you from something we could have caught. What I need to do? You just give your doctor a call. And they'll tell you what screening test you need. Fine. Can I have my pie now? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> High quality foods, friendly service, great prices, and a connection to the community that is unsurpassed. That's Jeans Heartland Foods in Eudora. Family owned, Jeans Heartland Foods offers a convenient one stop shop, delivering the everyday essentials you need to specialty items from around the world. Jeans Friendly staff is here to help you find exactly what you're looking for. You have options when it comes to feeding your family. Choose to support local. Choose Jeans Heartland Foods, 1402 Church Street in Eudora, or online at heartlandfoodstores.com. At Kansas Insurance, we know one size doesn't fit all. In fact, our whole mindset is based on customized policies for you and your families. We're local, and we do what we do because we care about you. Think of us as brokers for your insurance needs. Working with Kansas Insurance gets you the award-winning service and attention to detail that only an independent agency can provide. All across Kansas, we're here to help you manage and plan for all types of risk. Contact a local agent today. Kansas Insurance. Local. Independent. Serving you. Hey folks, save a thousand bucks on your interior painting project this winter. Hire Absolute Painting during November through February and qualify for 10% off your project, a free paint upgrade, and a free color consultation to make sure you choose the perfect colors to transform your home. This amazing offer only lasts until our winter calendar is booked and spots are filling up fast. Call now and save a thousand bucks on your interior project. No money down affordable monthly payment options are available. This offer won't last long, so call now to save a thousand bucks on your interior project with Absolute Painting, where quality is absolute. I used to drive an ambulance as an EMT, and I've always tried to be a safe driver. 
If people knew what I know, lives could be saved. In my car, if I see a truck or bus taking a turn, I know to take my time. When big vehicles turn right, they may swing wide to make the turn. If you try to sneak in, well, it's a lesson you'd rather not learn the hard way. When trucks and buses turn, let's you and I wait. It's our roads, it's our safety. At Kansas Insurance, we know one size doesn't fit all. In fact, our whole mindset is based on customized policies for you and your families. We're local, and we do what we do because we care about you. Think of us as brokers for your insurance needs. Working with Kansas Insurance gets you the award-winning service and attention to detail that only an independent agency can provide. All across Kansas, we're here to help you manage and plan for all types of risk. Contact a local agent today. Kansas Insurance. Local. Independent. Serving you. State coordinates of new land acquisition. Oh, we know that big oak tree that got struck by lightning? Negative. The barn with the funny cow mural? Negative. One-eyed scarecrow? Negative. Giant water tower? You're not from here, are you? I've never seen him. Robots don't know you. We do. Hey, how's your dad doing? For over 80 years, we built relationships first and plans second. It's your future. Let's protect it. Contact Farm Bureau agent Anthony Brown in Eudora today at 785-615-0516.
the smoothest, the creamiest, the most amazing ice cream you've ever had. That's what you'll find at Main Street Scoops and Sweets in historic downtown Eudora, Kansas. With over 100 mouthwatering Wisconsin made ice cream flavors, including dairy free and gluten free options. The bakery is always serving up the most heavenly cookies, cakes, and so much more. Ask about Main Street's custom cakes for that special occasion. What are you waiting for? Come make the sweetest of memories at Main Street Scoops and Sweets in downtown Eudora, where it's always ice cream time. Are you looking for a trusted partner in pet care? Look no further than Eudora Animal Hospital, proudly serving Eudora and the surrounding area since 1975. Eudora Animal Hospital offers a wide range of services, including wellness exams, surgeries, routine vaccinations, and emergency care. Hi guys, just wanted to say thank you from Eudora Animal Hospital for all your support and go Dogs! Schedule an appointment by calling 785-542-3265 or visit eudoravet.com. Call insurance agent. Hello, customer. Oh, great. Uh, I just had a quick question about my insurance. You are 312th in line. Oh, it's just a real quick question. Would you like a callback in six hours? Sometimes humans are just more helpful. Hey, Max, I can answer your insurance question. Awesome. I appreciate it. Farm Bureau Financial Services. It's your future. Let's protect it. Contact Farm Bureau agent Anthony Brown in Eudora today at 785-615-0516. Welcome back in here, Johnson County, 7-2, to two, the final score, 8-2, to two, the final score of the first game as well. So two big wins here for the Cavaliers. You just heard from your starting pitcher, Josiah Golden, answered a few questions of ours, just talking about what his mindset was going through, a couple of the tough situations. So great to hear from him. But as of now, that is all really we wrote here from Johnson County. It was an unbelievable series, four great wins Two great wins today, two good wins yesterday, and we will be around again here for Fort Scott. They played two on Thursday, then play the final two against Fort Scott on Saturday here at Johnson County. We will be here on Johnson County Sports Live for that one. You're not going to want to miss it. Going to be another good matchup here against Fort Scott. But as for this matchup against Nea Show and for the day, all we have to say is you guys have a good night, and as always, go Cavaliers.